Hello everybody and welcome to something a little bit different here today. We're going to be playing some Monster of the Week, which is a rules light tabletop RPG system. So, kind of like a Dungeons and Dragons, but you don't need to know as much about the systems to understand what's going on. It's more about telling a story. It's based on media properties such as Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Supernatural, Scooby-Doo, that kind of stuff where there's a different monster every week. But we had a lot of fun with this. This is our first session. It was kind of a practice session before we did a live stream of it, which may get uploaded later. But... I really, really liked it, and I hope you guys do, too. So in we go. Detective James Teach, you've been called to Boone County. There's no name for the town. It's just too small. Uh, you've been called to Boone County to investigate a series of carjackings uh, from the few locals that remain in the area. And it's quite spread out, and almost without fail, once per night, a car goes missing. But the odd part is, and the thing, the reason why you're being called in as opposed to just the local sheriffs handling it, is that no, no one can seem to like capture it. So no security camera catches any kind of details. It's like the car just disappears. And if and when people see the car on the road, it is going at just blazingly fast speeds and is sometimes purportedly on fire. And so you've been called to investigate this disappearing car the phantom carjacker i guess and so you uh i guess you don't have a car do you so you took the bus <laughs> you have yeah, I'm you used have to taking arrived, public transport you you have arrived in town dropped off by the only bus that comes by once a month so you're going to be stuck here a little while uh and as part of it you stopped by the local uh I guess it's it's a sort of all-in-one store for nerd things, but also for the Watchers, uh, who, uh, I guess lore-wise, masquerade as bird watchers, but they're more like cryptid watchers. They keep an eye out mm -hmm. for weird occurrences, creatures, things that shouldn't be in the area, and then they call in if there's something that is supernatural that, of course, local law enforcement either can't deal with or shouldn't know about. And so you've stopped in to get a uh, a lead from the local Watcher, and instead inducted uh, Max McGuffin as a, uh, mm. a a new hunter, as he had no idea that uh, the cryptids were even a thing. He just thought this was a movie store. And uh, minute one, you've you've inducted him in. I mean, how could I not? I've cared about this my whole life. I didn't realize it was real. All this effort actually leading to something. Oh look, now my bad. Frankly, I didn't, I didn't mean to expand your worldview suddenly like this. I didn't mean to suddenly include too many additional things into your mind space. It's more than, more than fine if you want to go back to a normal life of selling DVDs and flogging VHSs and Betamax discs and cartridges, etc. So on and so forth. I, don't get me wrong. This is a high octane life. I do love my job. I love my work. But you're telling me that everybody here has been lying to me? I can't forget that. I'm in. They've been lying to you your entire life. <laughs> so, I guess spooky doogies around every corner. Sorry. To interject for a moment, uh, I guess I should back up and actually tell Max some information he'd know. Uh, specifically, you are him. aware. You are aware of the Phantom Carjacker, uh, though you did not know it was supernatural. You just thought it was some some hoodlums uh, stealing cars and going joyriding. And the list of sus suspects is pretty small. Uh, but now that you know it's maybe not a uh, a normal thing, uh, the list of subject uh, suspects is way outside of your uh, your purview. So, so I guess if you want to, you could potentially uh, conjure up a couple of people to go talk to if if you want uh, if you feel the need to find somebody that like would know how to drive a car really fast. Uh, you would probably be able to find that person in town. Otherwise, you know that okay. they tend to steal. Muscle cars, classic cars, and you've been kind of worried about your car. Yeah, that that makes sense. Is there is there a world? Is there already a predetermined list you have in mind of all the people who've had their vehicles stolen, or is there a world where perhaps a friend of mine with a similar car already had theirs stolen? Because one a night is yeah. a pretty pretty rapid pace. With such so a small it, town, I would say the town's going to be carless soon. <laughs> I, it's pulling from the whole county. Like the town itself is okay. small, maybe maybe okay. like fifty, hundred people. But the whole county, there's actually quite a lot of people spread out in okay. farms and whatnot. And uh, kind of in the area, 
there's not a lot to do, uh, especially on like summer nights. And so it is not uncommon for people around here to have, you know, a project car they keep around, some muscle car mm-hmm. that they've been souping up on their own, uh, or like you, an old car that they've kind of held on to and updated rather than trying to replace it with something newfangled and shiny that you really don't need and probably yeah. can't afford. Yeah, I, I say Max, the unnecessary backstory. Max came from a very wealthy family. He's not wealthy. He's he's not about that. He's not interested. I think that this classic car, this like kind of terrible but classic car is special to him and represents something related to that. So I would imagine he wants to hold on to it quite quite tight. And uh, maybe he's got a, a friend shares a little bit of information back and forth with about their classic cars. It's a very, you know, a loose hobby perhaps uh can can you just give me like a a raw roll just pure chance a chance like a luck roll i like the idea not even of that. not even luck just just a 50 50 i guess coin flip would even work i don't I'll know go, i'll go with, I'll, I'll do the first die roll i'll do it above above six would be success and okay <laughs> well it's a six so okay so I, uh, I guess that would be a so no. no. Surprisingly, despite the mul- multitude of carjackings, you don't know a single person in town directly who's had their car stolen. It's more of kind of on the periphery, something you've read about in the news and heard people talking about, including your other friends who also have classic cars that enjoy their classic cars. It's kind of that rumor that's like creeping closer uh, to actually mm-hmm. becoming reality, but it hasn't hit yet. And so... Uh, it's been on the back of your mind, but you don't actually know anybody who's had their car stolen yet. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah. We do. Are you near me, <laughs> James? James, teacher, are you near me in this moment? Is this? Oh, absolutely. Or is this? I'm still standing yeah. vaguely at the counter. So, so okay. To look set, at the magazines, I guess, the pamphlets. To set the stage, you're probably in. In uh, the store is kind of cluttered. It's got every. Uh, have you ever been into like a used game store and how they're kind of wall to wall just everything? Uh, yeah, some amount of anime, a lot of old game, game systems, games. It's that kind of cluttered, uh, and so there's not a whole lot of room in this shop. So presumably, uh, Max, you are just behind the counter, and James, you are just hanging out there as Max is reminiscing about cars. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and my uh, my, why did I have to be into cars? My vast knowledge of of cars, <laughs> I can pull from. I have nothing, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I would I would say yeah, definitely there's been rumor around the classic car community at the very least the the brief people I've talked to. Uh but you say uh, none of them have lost their vehicles yet. No, I one a night though. It's kind of hard to hard to not notice something like that happening. Nobody I know though. Well, and what certainly not old Bessie. Old Bessie. What's old yeah. Bessie? Old Bessie's my car that I just named. Bessie's your car. Yeah. Well, I did see the, uh, did see the old, uh, old shined up rust bucket out front. About as old mm. as I am. Gotta say, I'm someone who's got a taste for the classics. But, um, you can't really stop a crime without breaking a few eggs. That's a, that's a saying we have back where I came from. Oh, is it? I've really got a... Really got to commit a few crimes to make a cake, you know. So, I've got a proposal for you, friend. If you don't happen to know anyone who's already lost one of these, we're, we're, fundamentally, as a detective, you've got to get to the scene of the crime. You've got to be mm. there. You've got to look around. You've got to have a have a little squeeze at things. And if there's no crime, well, better get to starting a crime. So, I'm <laughs> figuring. <laughs> I don't we know, hide I don't in know the if bushes. I feel that starting Sorry? a crime. <laughs> well, not committing one. Let me okay. go against the code of conduct. No, 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 no. Standing there and waiting for one to happen in front of you, just so you can act when it does. This is effectively the role of a guardian. Any, any store clerk, any security guard, etc. What I'm saying okay. is you've got a great, great vintage vehicle out there, but you've also got some lovely vintage bait. That's... You know, I don't like where you're going with this. Maybe I can get my... Uh... My friend Derek to put his up, but I don't know. I would say that, yeah, would I, could we, is there a world where there are, there's a, an actual meeting place where 
maybe we could find someone, even if I don't know them directly, I could possibly know a place where someone who maybe had their car stolen would meet up. So is that uh I I guess uh a world victim? knowledge, your character would know the sheriff probably knows something. And you know the car salesman has had cars stolen from him. Great. Okay. All right. Uh, do, does the car salesman have a name that I would know then? Would that be something my you character know, would already know? I just wrote him down as the salesman. All right. I, like, I was just in the, I was so just in the power, habit of I writing everybody down as the watcher, the salesman, the sheriff. Nobody has names. Everybody has titles. It's all good. Yeah. I, it, you know, the salesman... I don't know his real name, but he goes by Billy Cars. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, oh, and, you mean Mr. William Carr? Mr. Yeah, Mr. William Carr. I I got to be honest. I don't think that's his real name. I think that that's just like a persona he puts on to sell cars. You don't like, think it's a bit of a uh, bit of the old nominative determinism? He was named that by his parents, and then he decided to start flogging cars. I would believe it if he wasn't a car salesman, but either way, I, I would say that that's probably, that's my best lead. So. All right. All right. You, well, I'm, I'm sensing some hesitance to, to really throw it all on the line here with, uh, with Bessie at the initial instance. So we'll see if we can find the, I, the crime scene elsewhere. I'll tell you what, if, if it comes to it, I'll consider it. Got to make it worth my while though. It's probably my only possession I care about, to be honest. For what it's worth, it's not really going to be that much of a risk. I mean, you know, there are reports of these uh, cars being driven down the highway at quite some speed, uh, really burning rubber and steel and the glass and most of the car in general. So I can sense your apprehension at hearing that your car yeah. might be destroyed. <laughs> Perhaps. <laughs> yeah, okay. And where's Perhaps the part we'll that's to comfort little. me? Okay, I was waiting for the. I was waiting I for know, the. I butt. wasn't intending to comfort you there, friend. I'm agreeing All with right, you. Okay. Maybe shouldn't it? Maybe it was a bit hasty of me to walk into this store, introduce myself, and decide to risk your most valuable possession. I've got a valuable possession as you. well. I've got this whistle hanging around my neck. If you stole this away from me, I'd probably be pretty up, upset about that. I'd be pretty irate. I'd be, I'll tell you what. You're, Hooping and hollering around for, for someone to use this as bait. No, no, I understand your perspective. You're right about this. All right. We lose Bessie. Uh, you give me your whistle. Is it a fair <laughs> trade? No, but it's a trade that I'm going to offer. If, if it gets stolen, you have to give me your whistle. So there's stakes for you too. <laughs> you know what? Oh, put, it, put it there, pal. I think, you've, yeah. I, think, I think you've hit the nail on the head. I don't think it's an evil trade. I think you'd I have to give me a couple you. more cars. <laughs> <laughs> All but right. I understand the sense of the thing, the general feeling here. We're both putting some of it online. Yeah. I got got to, got to risk a little something. I mean, I'm glad to get you interested in this crime. Hey, uh, now I'm in America. I know the um you got to risk it for the cookie, right? That's um ab, how yep. it goes here. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> That's, That's 100% it, it. So, can we just head off to the car dealership? Yeah. So, uh, you being the model employee, flip the sign to closed, lo lock the door, and just leave. Yep. Middle of the workday. It is the workday, right? Yeah. Or are you guys more evening people? I would say workday. It, it feels right. It feels movie to do it in the middle of the workday. That's what mm -hmm. they always okay. do, and there's never repercussions. So, how could there be repercussions in a game? Yeah, you flip the sign to out for lunch for five minutes, and then you never come back. And then you never come back. It's also, I think that, um, what is the odds that there's even that many customers coming in anyways? It's a very small, 50 to 100 people in the town, and it's a video rental primarily. Probably not going to be losing customer in two weeks. too much business. Yeah, probably not losing too much business. A lot of people, but so, apparently they weren't customers. It was all for this, uh, this other thing I didn't even know. What, what was I even doing? <laughs> what did I think I was doing store. as my job? Yeah. You were watching Just movies. in case. I, I think that that is accurate. I think that I was watching movies saying that I was doing research, testing to give better recommendations for when eventually I had a customer. So technically your job was mostly to wait for weird people to show up and refer them to your boss, but you've forgotten gotcha. about that by this point. Yes. All right. Well, I'm, I'm down right. to head off to the, the dealership. I guess it, you can hop in Bessie, even though you threatened her. You can hop in Bessie. She'll take you. I do. 
I do want to get this straight. I didn't mean to threaten your car. I'm just mm. saying that if there was a threat to your car, that would be very useful for us. All right. Well, we'll see what she thinks of you. And I start revving the engine. And it starts in two <laughs> instead of one. So oh, she don't like that. Uh, <laughs> I, I, am, I, I momentarily stagger back from the machine before moving towards it. <laughs> oh, she works. Get so in. So describe Bessie for me. Two-seater, four-seater, muscle car, what kind of car? I'm going to go with two-seater. I'm going to go with tan, sharp, like pointy, very pointy, very jagged, tan, Okay. two seats. And let's see. No, no, I guess that's all I need to know. So you hop in the car and start driving. Surprisingly, the, uh, the car lot is actually kind of far out of town. Uh, most businesses set up kind of near the town center just because how else are you going to get business? But for whatever reason, this guy decided to clear cut a bunch of trees and build the lot kind of far out, like a mile or so. Uh, and he actually seems to do reasonably good business, probably on account of people needing something to do and buying their project cars from him or the parts. Cause he also handles, you know, a lot of the garage, the maintenance, uh, tire changes pretty much kind of all in one you've got a car problem or you've got a lack of car problem you go to this guy and it's been that way for upwards of 10 years uh and kind of your impression of the guy is not not great not great for the community not a nice dude uh but a decent billy car cars? Salesman. billy car I, billy i'm gonna have I'm, I'm gonna say it's car with two r's like uh i like that that's a much more I'll say that yeah, Max just didn't hear it right. And he just yeah. likes he just thought it was <laughs> Billy Cars. <laughs> now that's a real name. Okay, that's probably his real name. Okay. So you get there pretty much no problem. There's not a whole lot between you and there, just a couple of diners, a couple of shutdown businesses, and a couple of uh, farms, but nothing else. And it's pretty uneventful. Uh, mm -hmm. when you arrive, you find, uh, actually you find the sheriff and, uh, Billy Carr. So the two of them are, uh, seemingly having some kind of argument in the lots and, uh, Billy Carr seems quite irate and the sheriff seems kind of, uh, what can you do about it? Uh, to clarify, was I called in by the sheriff's department? So you were called in, uh, specifically by the, the, uh, the watcher uh, of Got the it. town. Mm. Completely the watcher being the, the leader of the private secret. Y your mm. boss. Whatever. Yeah, my boss. Okay, my boss is the leader. Gotcha. Good. Then. Yes. Yeah, there, there's only one in the area, technically two now, if, if uh, J or not James, Max decides to go that direction. Um, mm. But she's pretty much just been holding down the fort for who knows how long. Uh and, and so I, she I would know my boss's name, surely. And her name uh, is up to you, uh, Billy. Billy Boss. <laughs> <laughs> Please, not everybody's no, no, Bill. No, That'd no, be a no, problem. No. I uh, my problem with naming I'll is I get really bad uh, intrusive thoughts, and I come up with worse names than uh, Billy Carr, and mm. it's hard to escape that. So, uh, I, if you guys Francesca. want to name stuff, Francesca. All right. First name Fran, last name Cheska. <laughs> what? Sure. Uh, let's see. Where where was it? There it is. Okay. I'm just going to write these down. Right. Got to make sure it's Fran and Cheska. There we go. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, I'm assuming you just come in and park as normal or? I, so I've noticed already there's a kerfuffle. Yeah. Uh, it, I mean, it's pretty I much suppose... like right front and center. And yeah. uh, Billy Carr is kind of loud. I suppose I'd park like close enough, but not. I'm not gonna be parking in the business, like not like not up in their business. That is okay. So like far far enough away that I'm not like immediately gonna stop what they're doing. They're not gonna turn to me and be like, "What?" You know. Mm -hmm. So trying to kind of glean if there's anything else going on with this fight before stepping in. It's yeah, not very so much... similarly. Sorry, uh, very similarly. James is also going to be uh, as hearing your heightened emotions in a commo in a commotion off in the distance. 
uh, keeping an ear out to try and get a little bit of context as what they're yelling about. Okay. So it's not so much as a fight as Billy is just kind of really mad that his cars keep getting stolen. It's not many of them, uh, but enough of his cars have been have been uh, lifted over the last couple of weeks that it's starting to affect his bottom line, and he's pretty unhappy about it. Uh, and the sheriff is just kind of like, well, you know, we tried laying speed traps, couldn't get it, tried chasing it down, couldn't catch it, tried putting out cameras everywhere, can't see it. You know, I, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I don't know who's messing with the cameras. I don't I don't know who's doing the driving. Maybe it's some kind of new, like, newfangled crime syndicate, and uh, they've just decided to target us and maybe ship the cars back to uh, Bayport. So have we, have we parked our, parked our Bessie I, now? Uh, Bessie's parked. Uh, I'm, yeah, I would say I'm just analyzing. You, you're the professional in this scenario. I'm a civilian. So I, I think that I would just I just turn to look at you like, well, here you are. I'm going to start sidling up to the uh, the sheriff as well as Billy. OK, I uh, think so I as get you approach at a distance. At, as you approach, the sheriff just kind of turns to look at you and Billy looks kind of annoyed that you're in, interrupting his, uh, I, I guess, uh, yelling at the sheriff's se- session because, uh, you know, not a lot of people get to do that without consequences. So he's, Mm -hmm. he looks like he's kind of enjoying it, even if he's still upset. Uh, And he looks kind of like he's going to redirect some of that towards you because you're someone new to yell at. And how are you dressed by the way? I haven't actually asked for a physical description yet. Are you like classic gumshoe or? So no, not at all. Uh, I have (laughs) a a, a very uh, clearly sunburnt face at all times. Uh, I'm wearing a short sleeve, uh, slightly checkered off-white shirt, a, a full shirt with a collar. Um, I'm also wearing around my neck a uh, a whistle, which is uh, slightly off green, looks like it might be metallic. Uh, and I'm wearing shorts, and my shirt is tucked into my shorts, I'm wearing a belt. Okay. And well, we're at, you don't probably... have... Oh, what were you going to say? My, I should probably have explained. Usually that's something I probably should have done up top is I should probably explain my character too. I, I should have asked you up top. Uh, it'll come so up, good. I'm sure. It, all right, great, yes. When I look in a mirror, Max doesn't actually remember what he looks like. Whenever <laughs> we pass by a mirror, rem, remind me to Max, get a little Max startled. Max rolls out of bed, through a pile of clothes, and into the daylight. Honestly? Uh, probably. Okay, so... You don't have... Oh, I'm looking at the wrong character sheet. So what kind of uh, equipment do you have? You have brass knuckles, which I'm sure are hidden. And you have a camera. Mm-hmm. Is the camera like also around your neck or just kind of in a pocket? Um, so in my mind, that's a small disposable camera. Uh, okay. And it's kept off in a pocket at all times. Uh, I also have a cassette tape recorder, which is similar. I see. So Very low fi both... old-fashioned. Okay. So are they both kind of just tucked away in your pockets and... Mm-hmm. So you just kind of look like a tourist. Pretty much. Do you have like a badge visible or at <laughs> all or no? Uh, I, I don't have a, uh, a visible badge in this instance. If I work for a larger department outside, which I imagine I do, uh, yeah. I will keep that uh, tucked inside a pocket. But I typically like to approach people without giving them uh, my authority first. So... I, I guess functionally, unless you want to modify the backstory, I'm assuming your character is kind of associated with the the overall hunters organization, and mm-hmm. more or less your cover story is you solve weird crimes, uh, unless you want to change that in any way, shape, or form. Nope, that sounds perfect to me. Awesome. Okay, so I guess introduce yourself, react, because they're going to wait for you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I as I see, say, sorry, there. I, I, just a, as a reminder, there's also a literal in-game role for investigating mystery if we want to end up going the route of actually questioning mm-hmm. yes there is the in-game mechanic for that yep if any so of i think the way it good. works for the most part is you actually have to like kind of prompt that by saying what you're yes. doing and then i'll have you roll and then you get to ask me some extra questions uh to kind of summarize mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, oh, let's see. Wait, this is yeah, uh, that's, that's asking the keeper. That's oh yeah. Never mind. I thought that I was asking a person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Uh, technically, I think you can. I think it's still considered part of investigative mystery that is like interviewing witnesses. I think it's supposed yeah. to kind of like uh, streamline the back and forth conversation with the person down to just so. like roll and like say you're interviewing them, then roll and then I tell you what kind of information you can glean from them. And uh, so I I guess it's on page one oh one fourteen. Uh, if you want to get to this yourself, Rhapsody, if you're not already there. Um, but effectively, the way it works is on a 10 or higher, uh, you get to hold two questions that you can ask me kind of at any point. Uh, and you can just kind of save them until it's relevant or inter- uh, relevant or important. Uh, though I think mm-hmm. it can kind of expire, like if you leave. Uh, and then on the 7 to 9, you get to hold what? You get to hold one. Uh, and you can ask questions like, what happened here? What sort of creature is it? What can it do? Uh, what can hurt it? Where did it go? What uh, what was it going to do? What's being concealed here? Like, obviously, those are a little bit more monster focused, but you get kind of the gist of what you can ask. Yeah. And it is um, worth noting that those questions are like, in general, can I believe the mechanic is supposed to be asking the keeper too? but the keeper yes. does not have to. So like you're not it doesn't have to be completely relevant. You don't ask him like Bobby Carr what's being concealed here. You would ask Wander and Wander is as truthful like it doesn't mean you get all of the truth. It means you get some truth. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So the way it works is I cannot lie, but I can withhold information if you yes. somehow can't get it. So for example, if it's something the sheriff doesn't know, he won't tell you. But yeah. if it is something the sheriff knows, I cannot lie to you about what you discover from him. Uh, yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool. Uh, so back in situ, uh, as I see uh, Billy start to scrunch his face up, looking to redirect part of his anger towards me, I'm immediately going to decide this situation needs a bit of authority. So I'm going to start mm-hmm. reaching into my pocket in order to pull out my badge which uh, looks a lot like a, a, a law enforcement badge, you know, a la the FBI, etc. Uh, but in the center, instead of a coat of arms, it has a spiral. Okay. Now, so, oh, sorry. Continue. Now, did I, uh, did I hear one of you two talking about some, uh, some cars that have gone missing recently? My name is it's Detective the James Teacher. The only thing you've been Teacher. talking about. It's the only thing you've been talking about for, for how long now? Uh, the sheriff thinks, pulls out a notepad, month and a half. Month and a half, so that's, um, that's about 45 cars. Yep. All up and vanished without a trace. You can't, you can't, can't find hair nor hide of them. Oh no, we find the cars. They just disappear from the lot. We find them the next morning. Wait, so where do you find them the next morning? Everywhere. Crashed into somebody's lawn, out of gas on the highway. Uh, crashed in the woods. A lot of crashes. Has anyone happened to... Because a crash doesn't uh, doesn't just make no sound. A tree falls no. in the forest because someone crashed into it. Mm-hmm. Sounds a, sounds, sounds a, it sounds a lot. That's what I've heard. So, um, so any, anyone's clapped eyes on these? I, I should mention, when I say crashed, I mean like, went into the ditch. Whoever's crashing these is surprisingly careful. There is no wounds, no injuries... No victims, no bodies, no nothing. Whoever is stealing these cars uh, more or less runs it until they're out of gas or out of tires, and then they uh, run into the softest thing they can and then disappear. Now, you're, a, you, you're the sheriff of, uh, of this here county. I, I can see via the badge you're wearing on the, the, the top of your left pocket. I, I just happen to wonder, do you happen to know any uh, hoons and hoodlums? around here, the kind of people who might get a car and kind of run that rubber loose down the entire highway. He points at Max. <laughs> uh, hey now, I knew I didn't trust you, Mr. Cars, if that's your real name. Oh, this is the sheriff. Oh, shoot. I don't trust you. I really don't know you then. Then it's really not your real name. Maybe his name is Cars. Maybe it's, that's why I got confused. <laughs> the sheriff's name is Billy Cars. <laughs> and the, and the de- Max, you're making quite an accusation at Sheriff Carr no, and Billy Carr no, here. No, 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 the no. Carr brothers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they are not related. <laughs> yeah, no, no. I, 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 I strike that from the record. I just didn't, I misheard the, misunderstood which voice was which. Uh, I didn't do this. I'll tell you. I didn't do this. I have my own car. I don't need another car. There's 
probably video evidence of me at work all week, standing there prepping for the big sell. I I can confirm this. It's a, the sheriff is it's a whole man. The sheriff is mostly right messing with you. He's like from your experience with the sheriff, he's mostly a jokester. He doesn't really have to solve many crimes. In fact, the last murder was before you Max was born. So like this is a mm. very safe town. Uh and so, like, for the most part, there has been nothing going on. The sheriff doesn't have to do anything more than, you know, occasionally pulling somebody over for a uh, drunk driving incident or, mm -hmm. you know, a little mm -hmm. bit of speeding or out-of-towners making asses of themselves sometimes around wildlife. So he's honestly more of a park ranger than an actual sheriff. And mm -hmm. uh, he he's generally pretty friendly. You've had almost no interaction with him apart from, like, a uh, friendly nod as you go by either driving or walking usually driving not a whole lot of people walk around here because sidewalks just don't exist this far mm -hmm. out of society uh, there's one sidewalk and it is from the convenience store to the movie rental store and that's it <laughs> i love it useful path i'll say very very fair that there's little murder in a town of 50 because like at that point everybody has a use like a job that you need so like you kill somebody, you don't have a barber. You're out of it. Like <laughs> there's 50 people. You can't afford to you can't afford to murder. <laughs> You're going to lose some quality of life yourself. Anyway. Um uh, I'm I'm going to uh, turn my attention back to the sheriff for a moment and say, "Well, it's uh, it's funny you should uh, funny you should uh, point at Max here for for for, for the crime. Uh, this is actually the only person I'm certain didn't do it. It's the only suspect I've already cleared, so I'm working on to other ones at this point in time. But uh, you, 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 you were telling me about these crime scenes, these, uh, these, these, these abandoned wrecks that you'd find around the place. I just want to know: do, do any of them happen to have the uh, any materials from inside lost? Are there personal possessions you can, you know, gain back from the the people who lose their car? If they've left a, a photo of their child, or maybe their child in that car. Do they get that back at the end? Uh, if it's still intact, yeah. Okay, okay. You know, Billy, actually, not to not to leave you, 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 you know, hanging off in the corner, not really being able to answer anything here, Billy. Um, have you happened to notice any pattern in the cars that are disappearing? Does the uh, thief have a little bit of taste? Uh, so at this point, I'm gonna actually have you roll a investigative mystery because otherwise you're never gonna sure. do it, and I'm just gonna give you every bit of information anyway. Yeah, so roll and then add sharp. Add your sharp. Mm hmm So I get so a nine with that. So rolling two D6s. Since okay. you've not explained that. Two D6s above mm -hmm. a 10 is very good. Seven and nine is success below a six. Something bad usually happens. I don't think for investigative mystery there's a big failure state, though. You just mm. don't get info. Th yeah. What was... Oops, I'm on the wrong one. What is What is the failure state on it? There is actually uh, yeah, no you just don't. On it. Yeah, you there's no don't failure state on it. Yeah, mm, some of the but other ones are the have only if questions you roll. You ask. Yes, the the failure state effectively on investigative mystery is if you get six or under, you don't get to ask a single question. Whereas a lot of others have a failure state where if you get the lowest possible result, you do get to still do something, but you also get a negative result. Can you mark mm -hmm. exp on failing? Yeah, investigate a mystery. Huh, a hundred percent. Okay. Literally, I, I'll yeah. say Whenever I, I you didn't roll mark a six it, or less. Technically, mm -hmm. if uh, if the luck check counted, I could have marked experience, but I considered that a, a coin flip <laughs> no, IRL, that's... so I said no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> nah, that, that's pure but, just yeah. random chance. That has nothing to do with what your character is doing, and you wouldn't gain EXP for your friends not getting yes. their cars stolen. I uh, mean, why? I don't see why I shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So... Uh, so Raps, you find that mm. Billy Carr is actually a little bit more cagey. He doesn't really, he likes to bark orders. He likes to tell people what to do. And for the most part, he's just kind of demanding that you do something about it rather than giving you good information. Uh, mm -hmm. but you are able after some, some, uh, I guess I'm going to say, uh, clever verbal foot footwork. You can get him into admitting that he, that the, uh, the phantom carjacker mostly steals, uh, obviously fast cars, but classic cars. Specifically, none of the new fancy ones. Interesting. Max starts sweating. Looks at Bessie. Bessie is still there. Good. 
he he steps a little bit closer to Bessie. As as you look, uh, I guess Max probably can kind of get a fair sense that there's about five more classic cars left on the lot. Mm, okay. Five. Other than Bessie. Yes. Did he mention? Yeah. Did he mention already how many were stolen of his? Did I? I didn't. Did he mention no, that? No, he has not mentioned that, and I. He, uh, that's a separate bit of information. I think he'd be yes. even less likely to share. Yeah. You can guesstimate though that he's lost about ten. Okay. Ooh. Now, Billy, I had an idea this morning, and uh, I ran it past my friend here, Max, and he wasn't too thrilled about it, but um. Figuring you might be in a no. little bit nope. of a better. I know what you're. Sorry? I I know where you. Uh, sorry, let me get this voice. I know where you're going with this one, and no, you cannot use one of my cars as bait. I was planning on using all five, actually, if you're okay with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. His mouth just drops, and he says, "Uh, if you want to continue this line of inquiry, I have uh, well, I have a negotiator that I could bring to the table." Oh, we negotiating with the. Uh... With different instruments at this point in time. I didn't think it was going to get to that level. But if I have to put my hands inside my pockets, if I have to fish around in there and see what I can find that might do some damage, I'd be happier to do so. The but sheriff is going to... The, the sheriff walks between both of you and says, All right, boys, uh, I, I'm going to stop you before this gets illegal. Uh, no, there will be no bait cars out of this lot without his permission. And there will be what? no throwdowns in this lot... Uh, at all i i uh raise my hand as soon as he finishes that first clause about no bait cars out of this lot <laughs> uh sheriff i've got a question actually i've got my hand up okay can you can you call on me sheriff max moves closer to bessie <laughs> fine what's up i think there's an amicable solution to this now i was indeed intending on taking a couple of these cars maybe out but um them gather in the town square for a period of time and seeing, uh, seeing if anyone happens to approach and investigating the people that do. But you're telling me these cars have been taken off the lot. What if I don't even take them anywhere? What if, Billy, hear me out. What if you just let me hang around for a bit? I've got a badge. I'm all verified. People know who I am. You can call my boss. I'm merely looking to guard your cars for you in exchange for the possibility of catching the person who's trying to steal them. That seems, seems like bad. a good idea. Uh, good this deal sounds like a manipulate someone role. Yeah, this is a manipulate someone. So I will manipulate this man charm. with my charm. One rolled off the table and that never counts. Never oh, counts that is a total six. of 11. Oh, oh my god. Well, I, big he, success. He is... You can tell he is not happy with this idea. Uh, oh, I, mm, okay, fine. You can stake it out, but you got to be out of here by midnight. I'm here by midnight. I, I, can, I can get on board with that. That's about the time the missus wants to go to sleep. Because I, <laughs> I don't want to be running the cameras that late. Actually, you've reminded me of the cameras, Sheriff. I got one quick question for you, just before we uh, just before we wrap up here. You, you mentioned you're trying to capture this thing on cameras, and you, you you're not capable of doing so at the time. Is the, did I happen to hear that correctly? Yeah, they just uh, they just shut down like more or less a couple minutes before the carjacking and turned back on a couple minutes after. So they shut down. They turn on. I'm to presume from this that the things you're using are uh, electrical equipment for recording, digital perhaps uh yeah what else would there be now i'm gonna uh, throw a hand into one pocket and deftly pull out a disposable camera a a nikon 30 now i uh, i've found tangible media really physical stuff happens to be a lot better at capturing certain kinds of things you know you glints in the cloud you know, uh, some some far off, distant uh, distant land that you can't see with the naked eye, possibly ghosts. You can capture a lot of different things with a disposable camera. So the sheriff is just looking at you with a mixture of confusion and, like, how would I describe it? You have effectively pulled out, uh, I, I guess, l world wise, you've pulled out an ancient artifact for this guy. D film cameras don't really exist in these parts. 
And the sheriff, he's not young. He's never seen one of these. And so you are effectively suggesting witch magic to the man. And he is a non-believer of that kind of stuff. (laughs) And you would know this because this is a reaction you get every time you pull out a film camera. (laughs) Okay, okay. I can see you're not much of a cinephile. Put this away. It seems to be scaring the people in the local area. But let me just say that if you happen to put me in a position where I was capable of taking a similar shot as your digital cameras, I'd be able to find a better photograph. I'd be able to show that to you, proven who did this crime. I'll say, uh, while this is happening, under his breath, Max says, I've only seen those in movies. (laughs) It's true. Uh, So surprisingly the sheriff uh the sheriff is still mulling it over billy seems a lot more okay with this uh now that you've pulled out the film camera like he's actually down for this idea and is uh willing to let uh let you stay a little bit longer uh so like maybe 2 a.m but the guy really doesn't seem to want you on his property for long uh maybe on account of the fact that there are many expensive cars Mm mm-hmm mm-hmm I'll keenly accept the ability to stake out this location. Max, what are you up to I'll, tonight? I would say, but I want to mentally, this is happening while you were having your discussion. Mm. I, I wanted Max to be slowly backing towards Bessie. And then I potentially apologies, Wander, but I really want to use this ability. As he's stepping backwards, he goes, oops. And trips over a rock and uses the mundane ability <laughs> called Oops, which lets Max stumble across something important. It might be useful, but it may not be related to anything going on right now. Oh. So, so is there some kind of useful, doesn't have to be useful to this mystery, but a useful object? I need... Uh, I need to keep in mind, if you use this character again, I need to just have a small supply of oopses that I can pull out. Yeah, that's why, of... that's why I said sorry in advance. You find a single shotgun shell. <laughs> Great. And, oh, I'll say that, that I would definitely, I'm going to hold it up and inspect it as well. Like, see if, because... I would imagine finding a stray shotgun shell, it would feel like it's, I don't know if it's related to the mystery. I would be inspecting it like it's definitely related to the mystery. Are you holding it up in front of them? I would say like, this is like, again, well, it's it's happening while they're discussing, but I would say I would be looking at it when James is done and comes back over to talk to me. I'd say what you find is Max sitting there inspecting the shotgun shell. Mm Mm-hmm. Holding it up okay. to his eyes, say. First of all, you say, "What is this? Is this for a? It's for a pistol?" Okay, you know, you'd have to have a pretty large pistol to fire that, Max. Oh my so god! They have I, a I'm huge just going to interject pistol. with what happens. Uh, so the sheriff, the sheriff, uh, seeing as you guys have resolved it and he's no longer being yelled at by Billy Carr, he leaves. Billy Carr goes back into the office. As far as you know, he's probably just going to stay there until you leave. Mm-hmm. I would say I also, at this point, Max probably walks up to the... Is the sheriff still here, you said? No, no, he, he's left. No, he's, he's gone He's home. gone. Great. Yep. I would say he... Max tries to tries to look up and go, is this your... Oh, because he's going to ask if the shotgun shell belonged to the sheriff, but he's long gone. Yeah, you more or less say that to the fender of the, uh, the police cruiser as it uh, departs. I was examining it very, very closely. All right, I'll put this big pistol shell in my pocket. Yeah, Max. Well, you, you showed it to uh, James, right? Yeah, yeah, no. Okay. Yeah. Now, I showed Max, it to James, you know it. What's what do that? you happen to be up to tonight? Tonight, I was probably going to go home, watch some more movies, get ready for the big sell. Now, if you were comfortable putting, uh, putting a little bit of a, a halt to those plans, not going home and watching uh, Jurassic Park 2 by Michael Crichton, Steven Spielberg, of course, made the film, but Michael Crichton wrote the book. Um, if you weren't going to do that, would it be possible you'd uh, want to help me save some classic cars? Prevent them from coming to danger? Uh, let's see. I, I think that... I think that... Actually, yeah, 
Max Sorry. would probably be very in. You're gonna were you gonna suggest manipulating? I was going to suggest trying to manipulate you, and I also have a good reason as well. I that's what I was gonna say is I was gonna ask for that, but I was trying to figure out. I think you should do it anyways because mm -hmm. I, I think it makes sense. So there is a mechanic in the game for using manipulate someone on another player, and the person can get experience if they then abide by the role, or if the person rolls poorly you can get experience for not abiding by it mm -hmm. so oh. yeah so yeah it, this but it's is a manipulate someone role i would i would say the fact that bessie's on the line and i just yeah. met you and this is the craziest thing i've seen in my life i think that there but it's also makes sense i think max could absolutely be swayed because of how into this he is so but i'd say yeah roll it now max the safest route for Bessie at this point. You've got to recognize the safest route for Bessie at this point. We're in a we're in a town, we're in a town of maximum 150 people, possibly down to 50, somewhere between that area. I've ballparked it. There's not a lot of cars around here. Your car's probably gonna come up pretty soon and end up in yeah. one of these one of these ditches around the area. I'm a little We can prevent that from happening. First. Yeah. You're you're offended they didn't pick her first. You wanted yeah. Bessie. To get targeted. I didn't want it to be stolen, but I wanted it to be appreciated. Do not enough people appreciate your car, Max? It's a nice car. I mean, I don't know. My parents don't like it, but that's fine. I don't what care if they think they're, st they're stupid. I don't care about them. They, what they think. What do, you, what? do they not appreciate a extremely classic motor vehicle? I mean, no. They want something a little bit fancier, a little bit more tech. I'm not interested, but Max, uh, I'm on board with you. I'm, I'm I think not we should save as many of these classic cars as we possibly can. To that end, I'd like you to stake this uh, property out with me tonight. I'd like you to spend some time until 2 a.m. in the morning hanging out with me in this lot, preventing cars from getting stolen. What do you think about that, Max? I've rolled a I'm... nine with plus two okay, on charm for an 11. I was going to say, what I think is going to depend on roughly how convincing you are on a scale of one to 12. <laughs> so well, the you problem is nine? now it's the coin flip. They mark uh, experience nine with if plus they two. do what you ask. So it's 11 total. Oh, plus two. Never mind. Oh. Yeah. Oh, wait. Okay. So yeah. you're, you got an 11? Yeah. I mean, yep. I, I I think that the, the speech was convincing enough that Max would do it regardless, but now Max gets to do it and gets experience. Mm -hmm. I'd say, I'll say on, on top of that, uh, on a 10, if they do what you ask, they mark experience, get plus one forward meaning the yeah. next roll that i do i get plus one yep, oh, as well so uh I'll i say, think you can choose i think you can choose to save it if it's not exactly yeah, relevant. I, th I think that's probably the case too i would imagine that it'd be like as long as it's relevant to the thing asked and i think that anything we do from this point on is probably going to be irrelevant though um oh but no yeah, it's a very it's, nice it's a one time thing only. Yeah, forward is one on the next roll. Ongoing, ongoing. Means ongoing is every single time as long as it applies still, which is crazy. But there's some stuff that does that. Right, uh, got it. But I, I would say, I mean, you, you're right. They should have they should have stolen Bessie first. You're right. They <laughs> they're probably getting her next. So I, you're, we got to be where Bessie is, and I don't know. I guess we'll. We'll hedge our bets and we'll be in this lot that has all these other cars too, but it's probably Bessie. I'll stake it out. I'll stake it out tonight. I'm glad to hear that, Max. I'm especially glad to hear that you volunteered. Uh, Bessie is the location we would specifically be staking out in, so we're just both going to hang out in your car. Well, of course, I'm... Oh, you're right. Well, but if they're going to be taking Bessie, are we going to really want to be in the car if they're going to set it on fire and crash are it? Are they going to the take bitch? the car when we're in the car, Max? We're in the car. Uh if they try and drive the car away, we'll simply put down our foot on the pedal. We'll stop the car from going. <laughs> okay. Uh, you make an almost compelling argument. Um, <laughs> are, are we developing the basic lore understanding that James has no functional understanding of automobiles? I've never used a car in my entire life. I rode public transport <laughs> every single day of my life. All right, now what so about your character, Raps? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I do a slightly more Australian version of the exact same thing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah. All right. I mean, I'm conflicted because I do think that I don't want Bessie to be stolen. I guess you, you, you know what? You're right. We'll, we'll, we'll stake out in Bessie if they, when the ghost carjacker comes tonight and takes Bessie next because she's the next best one, then we'll be there and we'll see who they are. You'll take a picture with your ancient artifact and we will have our proof. And then I guess they'll just stop. I hope that's on you. Find a lot of the time when I'm due you, to uh, this. If you find a criminal in the course of a crime and you look at them and you say, Hey, stop acting like a nonsense Lord. Stop, uh, stop, stop disturbing the peace and calm in this area. You're really acting like a, like a, like an absolute banana, buddy. Why don't you sit down? Why don't you take a little bit of time off? Max is almost just never do. And then you have to fight them. And then they sit down for a bit. And this happens every time. Every single time, without fail. All right, we'll see. Okay. So then, what roughly do we know? Roughly what time it would be right now? Because if we uh, left during the day, it'd be kind of it'd be later, but not that late. It's probably like uh, I'll be generous. It's like seven o'clock. Your your work day is kind of more mid afternoon. You start work at say noon, and you usually end work around eight. And that's when your boss takes <laughs> over. So it's it's getting cl- kind of close to the end of the work day. Uh, for you, your boss is going to figure out that you're playing hooky, but whatever you're in, you're in for the long, uh, long haul and she'll probably forgive you anyway. Um, Francesca will approve. Yes. So, uh, sundown is, oh, let's say, let's say it's autumn sundowns in half an hour and like full mm. darkness is maybe in another half hour. So about eight o'clock, eight 30 is when it's starting to get real dark around here. Uh, mm-hmm. I guess where where are you guys staking out? Are, so you're just going to be hanging out in Bessie? Yeah, I guess so I was that's thinking, the thing. Is, yeah, I, I was thinking because it's like a car lot, right? That we might just yeah. like park the car in amidst them and hide within the car. So we're kind of just like camouflaged in the environment a bit. Why couldn't have I? Why did I say four seats? We could have been in the back. Curse me <laughs> in the past. I said, this, this, is why I, this is why I asked, because yeah, that could no, have been important. I, I was going to say, <laughs> the min-maxer in me wanted to say four seats, but the flavor lord in me wanted two seats, because I, I knew it would cause a problem. I knew it would yep. cause a problem. And no, I'm it's fine. Me. I've accounted for all of these things, sort of. Uh, okay. So you are, you're just hanging out in Bessie. Now you notice there are a couple of light poles. It's a reasonably well-lit lot, but there are definitely some dark spots and some light spots. And Mm -hmm. uh, I guess as it gets darker, you do notice that the uh, classic cars are put in the areas most lit. So where are you going to put Bessie? So wait, okay. So the, the cars, the other five cars are in the area that's most lit and where, Mm. Let's see. Well, I guess Max would say, well, we sh- do we get we didn't get keys for any of the cars or anything, so we can't even move them, right? No. Right. So, yeah, I mean, so since they're going to since he's going to take Bessie next, we should probably be parked right in the middle <laughs> is what Max would be pitching. Hope okay. that you have a different idea. <laughs> That's an interesting idea, Max. But um, <laughs> OK, I think it might be a lot easier, actually. For us to be able to pursue a suspect. If we happen to still have a car by the end of the encounter. That is a good point. Also, if they're going to probably, they probably take the, the cars that are further on the outside of the lot. Cause it's like easier access to like the highway. Or, and he's just trying to justify <laughs> why <laughs> parking in the darkness is actually the prime spot for Bessie to get stolen. How he's done a 180 on like, you know what? You've convinced me so well that like, now I some part of me wants Bessie to be stolen because it's not appreciated enough. So, <laughs> but yeah, we're we're I'd say we park in the darkness on the outside kind of perimeter. I'm glad to hear spot. you think that, Max. I agree. All right. So we'll uh, post up effectively uh, in as secluded a possible area as we are capable of finding. Okay. Secluded by I'm- light. Quickly trying to figure out where the uh, keeper move, custom keeper moves are, just so I can actually use one of them. Uh, but mm-hmm. I cannot find them in the book. It's slightly annoying. Uh, so I guess I'll just wing it. Okay. So you guys park in in the darkness. How how close are you within like a couple of car lengths, or are you like angled so you can get out of the lot really quickly? 
or somewhere like the most hidden spot in case they can spot you. And I guess, where are you guys in the car? Are you like crouching down or are you just kind of assuming they're not going to be able to see you in darkness? I, I think that at the very least, Max would be like slouching down, I guess in the driver's seat since you don't know how to drive. So I'd be <laughs> slouching down in the driver's seat at the very least. Whatever you're doing, I would I don't know. I've uh, I've I've kicked back the uh, the chair the chair back mm. as far as it'll possibly go, uh, and I'm lying uh, looking through the camera at all times through the windshield. And I will say, Bessie's a bit of a clunker, uh, so it doesn't go back as far as you want. <laughs> <laughs> so I might be slightly more visible than Max. Okay, I'm causing uh, problems so you, on purpose. So you guys just kind of kick back and wait do you do anything while you wait uh i i mean i think that i would just be i think i would wouldn't really have anything i would this is my first time staking out in any kind mm -hmm. of a capacity i think i think i would just keep on every once in a while like looking over to james going so when's it gonna happen you know the thing about a stakeout that's so fun max is you never know when it's going to happen. It could happen at any time. It could have happened five minutes ago, and we weren't paying enough attention to happen to see. Uh, one, yeah. two, three. But in the five, movies... Five, there's five cars there. It's in the good. movies, the second they get in the car, they wait a little bit, the, the main character asks the other one a question, and then they get comedically interrupted, and then there's some kind of noise that happens. And That's they, a good they point, look over there, Max. and they go, what's over there? That's a good point, Max. I've heard that happens in movies. But the thing is, life isn't like a movie. You don't just have these things happen willy-nilly. What, there's like... Real life obeys real life, rules. What, like no phantom carjackers? Exactly like that. Interesting. You're onto it, Max. So, yeah, I mean, are you... Would you... I, I would keep nudging James to, like, keep your camera up. He's gonna come for Bessie anyway, like, right? And then he is pointing towards, like, probably the entrance of the, of the lot. Like, keep your camera pointed over there. We're gonna, you're going to have no time. He's going to come in, he's going to see Bessie, and it's going to be over. Now, Max, if what? I just get a random photo of a, of, a, of, a, of a man just walking into this lot, what does that prove? It doesn't really prove any sort of crime. I've got to keep this camera trained directly at those classic cars and take a photo when the man steals the classic cars, because that counts as evidence. I can submit that to a court and then put some cuffs on this guy. I mean, you know better than me. I, I'm just in it today. I don't know. I, I'll trust you. But again, if you're looking for the one who's going to take a, if you're trying to see him catching the car, like taking the car, probably she'd be aiming right here. But okay, whatever you do, you. Um, why don't you try and convince me? Great. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Mani manipulate you to, I, I guess, I, manipulate I'm not you gonna into let you believing. Guys... I'm not going to let you guys farm, farm the XP with manipulating yeah. <laughs> yeah. someone. As funny as that would be, uh, no. <clears throat> what happens instead is as you guys are bickering where to point the camera, and James is probably kind mm -hmm. of switching back and forth, all the lights go out. All right. It is I would say... totally pitch black. You cannot see a thing. Did it happen in the middle of one of um, Max's sentences where he's saying, but in the movies, like, like kind right of, at the end, maybe, right at the end, we, like it is punctuated it is yeah. too well timed because yeah. why not? We, we now, never like we never stop bickering about this. Like, but Max, see, but I there's this zombie movie. And in the moment that he said that, when are they going to show up? Then he, you know, the hand came through the window, grabbed his throat, ripped his throat out and he died forever. But and then and then no, it Max. gets cut out. <laughs> yes real life doesn't usually act like movies so this is a coincidence the lights shouldn't have gone out there I go uh see if i can find keep a break down. see if i can <laughs> keep your voice down there's not gonna be zombies out there max zombies aren't real good to know i'll start making the checklist go keep quiet go do that um i'm going to uh step out of the car to try and find okay. a better vantage point where I am going to have an easier time uh, surveilling the vehicles while it's dark. Okay. Uh, Ma oh. Max is still in the driver's seat, slouched down very far, by the way. Like, he is turned into more ball than man. I guess Rhapsody, that would kind of be a read a bad situation. It's not that bad, but it's definitely worse for you than it was uh, like a minute ago. Mm-hmm. 
All right, James, keep your wits about you. You've been in the dark before. You're not scared anymore. Um, I roll an eight. Okay. So uh, I guess this is kind of like investigate a mystery. You get to ask me one question. Mm. And if you a act on the answer, you get a plus one ongoing while the information is relevant. I'm going yeah. to uh, ask, are there any dangers we haven't noticed? Okay. Mm. Uh, so that was the right answer. Uh, you hear a noise. And it's not a good noise. It sounds like screaming or something. It sounds like, um, I guess, a jet engine. Your character's probably been on a plane recently. It sounds mm. kind of like that. It's getting louder. Does it sound like and it's in the distance coming nearer, hence the loudness? Yeah. Yeah, it's not it's not in the uh it's not in the lot. What direction does it seem to be coming yet, from? Right? Sorry. Yeah. It's coming from out of uh I guess further out of town, the direction you haven't been. And then I, I would imagine since you you read the situation, you're out there, I would I have not heard it, right? It's not audible through the car yet. Yeah. Yep. So I'm I'm still just in there and I'm like I'm it seemed like a joke, but I've started to make a list and like it's a checklist of like zombies and then there's a yes and no like ghosts yes and no and then <clears throat> i crossed out n so i have zombies and i crossed out no so <laughs> that's what he's doing he has no unaware um i'm going to uh from still within the yard move as far towards the sound as possible and try and find a location to uh obscure myself okay so you find i mean the whole place is it this is deep in, in kind of this like big wooded territory. There's not, uh, mm -hmm. there's, there is so many hiding places. You actually have some trouble finding a good one, but it really doesn't take too long. It's mostly just that tree looks great. No, that bush looks amazing. And eventually you kind of wedge yourself in between a tree and a bush and with like a clear view of the road and, uh, at least what little of the road you can see through the the rising moonlight and starlight and, you know, whatever last rays of dusk are still kind of coming through. Uh, but you can mm -hmm. see the road and you can kind of see where it is. And it starts as a pinprick of kind of green. And it gets, it comes closer and closer and closer. And it's, it's really fast. Like whatever this is, is screaming down the, down the road at, Oh gosh, what is kilometers per hour for you? Uh, kilometers per hour? Yeah, let me let me just do a conversion. Well, it gave me the meters per second, but that's not helpful. Uh, it's a it's nearing two hundred kilometers per hour. Like this is unreasonably fast, uh, for any vehicle to be going, even especially on these roads. Uh, but so you more or less park yourself there, waiting, watching, and waiting for that perfect moment. Give me an act under pressure. Excellent. Uh, for clarity's sake, I will also have trained my camera on this phenomenon. Yeah, I, I figured. Like, I'm assuming you're ready to take the photo, and I'm just preemptively asking for the act exactly. under pressure. So that is... Uh... Uh, ooh, do I have any positives to cool? I do not. That's a six. I fail. Okay, so you do get a plus one, kind of, because uh, you'd asked about the danger. So you get a seven. Oh, which means Ooh. seven to nine result. Raps, okay. you're never going to get an experience like this. No. <laughs> I got to stop <laughs> failing. Worse. Uh, okay. So on a seven to nine, Keeper is going to give you a worse outcome, hard choice, or price to pay. So uh, you see the thing almost kind of clearly. Uh, it's it, it looks like a motorcycle that is on fire. The problem is... Everything that it is passing is also on fire. Oh. Mm. So, you're right in its kind of blast zone. Do you take the shot? Or one presumes possibly dive out of the way. There is a the very shot. convenient rock. Mm. I, before this occurs if possible i would like to enact my uh gun uh, sorry my occult confidential the first time in each mystery okay. that you observe a monster minion or phenomenon in action you may ask one question from the investigative mystery list Ooh, all that's right fun. so i'm question? getting a relatively clear vision and the vision that i can see of it is is a motorcycle engulfed in flame yes 
I don't seem to be able to see or notice anything in the driver's seat. Uh, there's a figure in the driver's seat, but it, I mean, it's still pretty far away. You just can kind of tell it's a motorcycle that sounds like a jet engine. Okay. Okay. When it, uh, when it gets close enough, I would like to, uh, use my investigative mystery question from a cult, uh, confidential to, uh, try and figure out what sort of creature is it and relenting to the knowledge I might be able to get that way. Uh, I instead elect to dive out of a uh, out of the bushes and behind a rock to protect myself from the fire. Okay, so ra rather than taking a photo, you're just waiting until last second, then getting out of there beforehand. Okay. Yep. Uh, as it goes by, you see it doesn't have a head, and then you dive behind the rock. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Doesn't have a head. I would say at this point. I want to mention that Max is probably getting like antsy and a little bit worried. Oh yeah. As so Max, James Max teacher has over not, to you. Yeah. Cause so James is not come back out. for a bit in the dark. Yes. Yeah. The lights went out. James disappeared. You don't know what happened yes. to him. You cannot see, uh, cause it, you know, it's, it's dark out there and getting darker. Uh, mm -hmm. but you do hear the noise just okay. much cl uh, when it's much closer. Like it's, it's loud, but, your car is reasonably soundproof comparatively. Okay. I, at this point, it's probably been long enough. And like, I am starting to get more and more shaky as I'm writing my list. And I go, Oh, okay. All right. Where are you? Strange man. Um, uh, and I think that, I think that Max would probably start getting out of the car. And would you consider, uh, running into the darkness unknown to be immediate danger? Uh, not really. Not at oh. the moment. You are not okay. under immediate threat unless your plan is to directly run into the road. At which point, I, yes, that is a I very would imagine, immediate danger. <laughs> that's, that's immediate danger in real life, too. It's just, that's just how it is. I would say that Max would have no strong reason to want to run into the road yet. Unless, okay. so I heard the noise, I heard where it came from. I don't think that he would run into, okay. Because I, I have a move for charging into immediate danger. That's why. Yeah, I what could go wrong? I see it. Yeah. But yeah, unless yeah. you're pretty much running at the thing, uh, probably not. I'm going to say, yeah, I'm going to say probably not. Uh, but I think I would just get out and I would be like very shaky, very nervous, just probably trying to find James at this point Would that. Okay. Would I need to roll anything for that? Uh, it, it'd be act under pressure if anything, but I don't. Yeah. Know. Probably or, act under pressure. Sure. Why not? Cause it's dark. You don't know. There's a jet engine thing. That's terrifying. And you do see the forest is lighting on fire. And I would imagine like, there's going to be a lot of pressure for Max who is not used to this stuff anyways. And I okay, got so a, you are setting out to find my James. My goal is find James and I got a uh wait, plus 7 plus cool. So I, I have 8. Doesn't change anything. Uh so, yeah. You would also get your plus forward, oh, right? Yeah. I mean, it doesn't change anything though. I get Yeah, so it still pushes up to a 9. Uh Oh, I was looking at help out and I was like, what does that mean? Yeah. Okay. So a worse outcome, hard choice, or a price to pay to find James. Okay. So you, worse outcome, hard choice, or price to pay. You can hit me with it. I don't mind. I'm just trying to think of how it would be a worse outcome than finding the man in the ditch just outside. Like that's almost well, worse too mundane. I will say it also, like, it It does not say it's, it's successful. I could just, the worst yeah. outcome could just be that I no, don't find him. That's a good point. Okay. So you, oh, huh. man. Okay. Perhaps I like stumble closer. I stumble closer to the road, maybe being a little bit. Maybe, yeah. I don't know. That's on you. I don't know. I, I'm just trying to think because would Max move towards this, the screaming noise in the fire to find I, James? I think that, yeah, he. I think that I would just be going out. I would be looking and then maybe Max would be a little bit too scared of that fire. So do I see the fire? I, I heard oh, the yeah. noise. Do I see the you, fire? You can see the okay. fire is lighting up in the distance. And as somebody that's grown grown up in Boone County, forest fires are kind of like an instinctual thing for you. So almost, yeah. I guess the answer is, uh, your hard choice is, do you want to find James anymore? 
because the fire, the forest is yeah. starting to burn. I would say Max is, I'm the mundane. I would say that that hard choice is probably no. I think that I would be, I would imagine at this point, I step out, I see the fire, I do a quick search. I don't, I don't immediately find James. And then I kind of start slinking back to hide outside Bessie at this point. Okay. So you hide behind Bessie and let's cut back to James. Yeah. So James, you manage to avoid the fire and you are comfortably behind your rock and you hear just the jet engine scream by uh, and then it's gone. The fires, there's kind of a hiss. Like the fires start around you. The grass lights up and then Mm -hmm. you were hit by water and the fire's gone. Huh. And what, what direction does this noise, uh, water come from? Uh, above. It's like you got yeah. rained on very briefly, just enough. Hmm. I'm gonna look up to see if there's a single cloud in the sky. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense then. That's why it would have <laughs> rained on me. Um. Does the <laughs> do I see the fire this continuing result? further into the distance? Yeah. So by the time you kind of haul yourself out of the ground, you're sure you're fine. The fire is gone. You get up, and this thing's moving so fast that, like, even the five seconds that it probably takes for you to be like, oh, I'm not on fire. Okay, let's get up. Uh, It's, I mean, it's still a pretty fair distance considering how fast that thing is going. Um, Mm -hmm. So it's, like, a ways down the road. And uh, you can still see the fire. It's kind of like this weird wave where you can see the fire start and then stop, and it just kind of follows the thing. Um. Until it's out of out of sight. Do I happen to know which um, uh, what lays in this general direction that it's uh, moving towards? No. Okay. Um, I'm gonna uh, start making my way back to the lot uh, to ask okay. a local. Okay. Mm. Um, you you after... find you find mm. Max just hiding behind the car. I okay. Oh God! I thought you were dead. I thought you were dead. I didn't think you were dead. I thought everything was fine. I was pretending everything was fine. And then I got a little bit worried. And then I came to look for you. And then I saw there was fire. I saw there was lots of fire. I thought there was a forest fire. But then it, I get, did I see the rain? No. I yeah, guess it I, was rain. I'm I would drenched. have to, I, I would have to at least seen the fire is now gone. That was the quickest yeah. forest fire I've ever seen. <laughs> it's also uh, one of the quickest uh, rainstorms I've ever seen. Sudden onset, very localized. In sudden distress, it, you know, it, it effectively looked like it was there just to put me out. Basically, I, that's convenient. I what did you see? What caused that? So, um, kind of. I kind of happen to see it. It's um doesn't have a head. Is the thing about it? Do you uh like the headless horseman? So, kind of like the headless horseman, except it wasn't riding a horse. It was riding a Harley. I mean. So it's, horsepower's got to come from somewhere. That's a good point. This is a, a headless horseman who has the power of 360 horses. It's the headless horsepower man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, Max, you wouldn't happen to have, uh, wouldn't happen to have watched a, a, a film, perhaps. Maybe a little bit of a documentary. Maybe a little bit of, a, maybe a little bit of fiction, even, about um, headless horsemen. Oh, I mean, I certainly have. I uh, don't know that any of that would be applicable, but I would imagine, oh God, headless horsemen. What do they use? Probably use like weapons <laughs> to kill that uh, man. So, Max, you're probably most applicable knowledge is you've seen both Ghost Rider movies. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Is like, I mean, if you're if what you're telling me is true, he's probably on our side. He's like a he's like a probably like an anti here. I don't. He's not necessarily just because he has a like. Well, I guess he has a skull. I mean, I guess this is a different guy. I guess I have got nothing then. You said there's a good to, point to well clear, made. Th- you said headless. You didn't say uh, skin on headless. Oh, I said headless. Not a okay. single head to this guy. Okay. All right. I, the one for, I know is gone. Context. Skull. I guess I should just to be descriptive. It had like mm. fire kind of where the head was, and it was just kind of gouting out and streaming behind it. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, and then I'd imagine you'd read, you'd relay that. I it mean, seems to have higher for a head. See, we're almost there. I mean, Nicholas Cage had 
definitely at one point a large part of the movie he had a Nicolas Cage head <laughs> and That's then at some point. parts of the movie he had a skull for head but there was no as far as I'm aware there's no part of the movie he had no head so I, I can't help you with with how to defeat him you know at every point in that film Nicolas Cage also had absolutely sick abs that's true. He was working to get really yoked, cut hard before the film, was really, really depressed when it was not well received by audiences for the amount of physical work he put into it. Oh, nobody liked that? I like that one. I, I think he insane. should take the, the reward that's see. given I in got that instance. I 20 minutes into that physical movie and fitness. just bailed. I don't yeah. think I, yeah, I watch, I don't remember anything about it in real life, but I would think that Max liked it. I would think Max yeah. really okay. enjoyed it. I think Max likes probably most movies that he has seen is what i would guess uh, all right max, max is a fan probably of of the movie but i and i would say that since you got him talking about movies he probably is not going to stop even though this is a very dangerous situation mm -hmm. so and then there's that one scene in the movie where he drove really really fast and then the road would caught fire so i guess yeah it's kind of like that and i and he just keeps going. Um, I'm, I'm going to keep you in a uh, tail effectively, like almost put a hand on your shoulder and just get you to come along behind me while I walk up to the uh, office where I imagine Billy may still be. Okay. Uh, the lights are off. Oh, inside the office even. Yep. And the door is locked. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it a, a, a swift rap. Knock, knock, knock. Mr. Mr. Billy. He... Boy. You wait for a while and he doesn't answer. Huh. I'm going to uh, uh, scope out the perimeter of, of this little office. Is there any opening or uh, method of in, uh, ingress? There is a front door, a back door, and like kind of a big, not a, is it a bay window? It's kind of like a big double wide window. There is one car inside the building uh, that looks really nice. And then other than uh. that, nothing. Um, I'll, I'll come back around the front and uh, interrupt Max's monologue about uh, next, the, uh, the you... suspense nightmare that uh, Nicolas Cage started. Did, but I, I was like, do you know that when they were filming the movie, they had to get, Nicolas Cage had to get his tattoo covered up with makeup so he could play Johnny Blaze. Did you know that? You know, I didn't happen to know that actually. <laughs> Good, good little bit of movie trivia for me to take into my next encounter with yeah. someone who happens to be very familiar with the you, art and works of Nicolas Cage. You know the skull in the movie was actually made off of a three-dimensional x-ray of Nicolas Cage's skull? Did you know that? Did you know this guy has a better car than Bessie? Hey now, wait, watch your mouth. He snaps out of it. <laughs> uh, I point in the window to direct his attention to uh, this very nice, safe car. I peek in. It's a nice car. It's pretty nice. It's fine. Max thinks it's a really nice car. He says it's a fine car. Do you happen to do you happen to know anyone from your uh, from your from your forums that might um do you happen to know anything about this kind of a car, Max? Would I have any knowledge of this type of car? Is there probably? I mean, if your character has like an old uh well a classic car, you're probably vaguely aware. Uh, unfortunately, your keeper has no idea about cars. I'm about as yeah, that's kind of, mm, close yeah. to cars as uh, Raps is. So, I mean, oh, God. one thing is you could just make up any name. <laughs> Billy Cars. Billy, Ca Billy the Car. Uh, oh, geez. I'm just looking up cars, but I have no idea how to judge them. Wait. Uh, how big are the tires? <laughs> They're big. Is this a, like, oh, it's a monster truck. Non-standard big. Cool. Then it must be good. Okay. Here. Here's my workaround. What is the best muscle car in GTA 5? <laughs> uh, I feel like Max ooh. would know that, too. Oh, yeah. Ma Max would know that. In fact, that's probably where Max got most of his information. Let's go with the Vapid Dominator. Because that, that sounds like a cool name for a fast right. car. Yeah, so I've, I've, you know, I've seen that in GTA. I, it's fine. It's good. Like, it's good. You know, we get you around, but there's no personality in it. You know, like old Bessie, she's got stories. James, you notice Max is just like pressed into the glass, and he's like kind of, <laughs> kind of just like 
reaching for it but can't. Yeah, his you can say you can see he's got like this his teeth are like really pressed together while he's talking too. Like he's like kind of a little bit a little bit angry mm -hmm. that it's you know, because his worldview's being a little bit changed. But uh you mentioned there was there was a locked door in to the, uh, to, so the, the, the front or? door and the back door are locked. Uh, okay. Peering through the glass, uh, you, uh, you know, give me an investigate a mystery check now that you're like really looking. Me or? Yeah. You're peering through the glass. Yeah. I'm peering through the glass. And I'm actually, I'm not as. Ooh. There's a, you know, there is something. Raps, there's a move called help out mm. <laughs> just putting that into the universe i have rolled i have i have a six if you can successfully help out it could make a difference but it also there is a potential i'm i'm happy to give that a go yeah. there is the possibility that i can just fail and also harm myself uh i roll a total of 10 okay, okay. so that just so that's a plus uh, one that puts us to seven seven so you have one. You have one hold. One hold for investigate a mystery. It can be spent on one of the following. What happened here? What sort of creatures? What can it do? What can it hurt? Where did it go? What was it going to do? What was being concealed? These do these ones are definitely in relation to the monster. But the I'll, monster. you know, investigating a building, it counts. Yeah. I'll can I say what's the way in? Is that a okay. applicable like or what what's so, being concealed here? What door is being concealed here? There we go. What entrance is being concealed here? Ah. Uh okay. So you look. There is so there are two doors in the room, the one you're more or less next to, and then a door to the back room. Uh that isn't exactly visible from the outside. So there is a interior room, uh, that isn't just kind of the showroom main office. Uh, and that's probably where that back door leads to. Okay. All right, I think we would sneak around to see if they're okay. So the back door, it's locked. It leads to that room. Mm. Mm. So that's a, a method of moving between rooms once we're yes. inside, but we're not inside. I'm I'm just gonna um, just casually test this window and see if it happens to open. Uh, it's like a big, like one of those big windows that you know people walking up to the business can see through. It doesn't really right. open. Got it. Hmm. Now, Max, we are just generally considering effectively breaking and entering at this point. I'm going to tell you, that's, um, that's actually a bit of a crime. But if we were concerned mm. for the welfare of Billy Cars, who was going to be in that office the entire time and hasn't given us a response just yet, um, we'd be a little bit more justified. I'd feel more comfortable if we went and knocked on the back door first, just in case he happens to be in the uh, secondary part of this office. I mean, I think it'd be... A I think it'd be a crime if we didn't break and enter. If you think about it, it's kind of immoral to not because he could be in danger. So I don't do this much, but I'm in it. Also, I've done There's been a lot of crazy stuff already tonight. I've already, I'm going to be honest. I have maybe broken into places before and that, that concerns me less than a lot of the other things going on. So I don't care. I'm in. All right, so you're going to be working the lock if we happen and want to break in, but if you'll just allow me, I'd like to go around the back and knock on the back door just before we do that, just in case. I, you go right ahead. And um, I, I do I, follow. I will move around to the back door and also give that a uh, rap, trying to get uh, the sound to echo in the room that is secluded from our vision. Okay, so you're you're knocking kind of hard. Mm-hmm. Okay. After maybe about half a minute... Uh, Billy Carr does actually show up and he looks kind of grumpy, uh, like you interrupted him. Yeah. Um, Mr. Billy, I've, uh, d what? Sorry, have I interrupted you from doing something, friend? Yeah, I was reading a book by flashlight. Okay, so you were reading a book by flashlight. So you, you happen to, happen to be awake for this period of time. Ears open, did you? Have to hear some some screaming hoonery come down the road outside. Uh, I thought that was you. Oh, huh. okay. Well, I, that, that, that wasn't did us. You, that wasn't did us. Did you get the carjacker? Is is that what you're telling me? 
So we haven't gotten the carjacker just yet. So why all the screaming? Well, because that was the carjacker, you see. The carjacker appears to scream and burn things and then make them wet. He looks at you like you just said a complete nonsense thing to the, the totally normal person that he is. So, Billy, you mentioned uh, you mentioned having lost a, a couple of cars from your lot earlier. Just uh, curious, if I've happened to spot the car thief outside, and uh, he's emanating a scream from his body at all times, um, how are you not familiar with that scream if all your cars get nicked? I... This is the first time I've been on the lot waiting for a car to get jacked. I'm not going to sit around and wait for carjackers. Who knows what they have? That's a good point well made. They might be able to set you on fire and then set you out as well. <laughs> now, Billy, while I was doing a little bit of a welfare check here, you know, scoping around the, the, the corner of this vicinity so I could tell you that we've wrapped up our, uh, our search in the lo local area and we might be headed off soon, as, uh, as, as it doesn't appear the crime scene is here as much as the highway outside. Um, so they didn't get any of my cars? They didn't get even a single one of them, but I do actually have a question, Ari, your cars. Yeah? While I was uh, doing the aforementioned welfare scope of this vicinity, I want to see you've got a, um, sorry, Nix, uh, what, 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 what kind of car do you call it? A, uh, uh, that's great. What was, a, uh, a and vapid dominator, and it is a way outside your price range. He looks you up and down very dismissively. I want to say while this is happening, Max peeks around the corner and to look if the five cars are still there in the light. Yes. None have okay. been moved, none have been touched, and uh, the lights kind of... Actually, at some point in all of this, the lights have come back on. Okay. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. They were out. Yes. All right. Actually, um, I've got a question about the lighting after this, but uh, that, that, that vapid, uh, vapid dominator, I think it was, vapid dominator, Max? Vapid dominator, yeah. That's a pretty nice car. You wouldn't have it to be uh, hiding it away such that all the other cars get stolen first without this one being taken yet. I mean, it's my most expensive car. I'd be an absolute moron if I left it out on the lot, especially during the height of carjackings. You're not wrong, you're not wrong, but um, it, it just puts me in mind of the possibility that, uh, you know, when someone repeats an action consistently, often it's because they've failed to achieve their motive. They haven't really succeeded at their goal across that period of time. And I'm just wondering if maybe, you know, 45 now, 46 actually, 45 cars and one motorcycle have been stolen in an effort to find a specific one, perhaps one that's been secreted away from the car thief. He narrows his eyes. What are you suggesting? I'm not suggesting anything as much as asking a general question of, uh, where'd you get that car? I bought it. It's mine, and I was gonna sell it. You're more than welcome to have the car, and you're more than welcome to sell it as well, but could you tell me who you bought it from? Uh, wholesaler in Bayport. Usually sells luxury cars, more or less of the highest bidder. What are you asking? That I it's like some kind of weird blood money thing. Max it could be blood, blood money, money. And comes closer. It is almost it assuredly not. If it was, I have no hitman. idea. <laughs> you talk about hitman. If if it's con contraband, then it would have been uh, would have had to have been stolen in uh, Italy at some point, and then shipped over completely untouched. Like the most you could possibly pin pin. Uh, pin me for on this with this car is that I possibly outbid some other jerk who wanted to buy it and that's it and that's a pretty weak motive because you can still yeah. buy these cars they're expensive they're not intensely rare but uh that other jerk who wanted to buy it didn't didn't happen to be offering like a absurdly high price for it maybe maybe someone who seems intently I meant interested that in, in a general specific. sense a general car okay yeah. I'm picking up what you're putting down. Just, just making sure that I tie up all loose ends here. I, if you're implying that I made an enemy with the purchase of this car, I can assure you, I did not. We haven't happened to make any enemies otherwise, because you have lost now ten cars, at yeah. least by my estimation. If anything, <laughs> somebody's made an enemy of me. I just don't know who they are. If you can point me in the direction, I'm sure I could work something out with them. You know. 
That's actually a very tempting offer. If you'd like to leave me your number, if I happen to find an, an individual who needs a little bit of a conversation with the person who uh, happened to own the cars, I'll give you a that holler. How about that? Lovely. And he gives you his number. You now have, uh, you just have his phone number. <laughs> don't, don't call me after, uh, after midnight though. I, I do need to sleep. Mm-hmm. Mm. This guy's got an obsession well, with midnight. Speaking of, can I go home? It is getting kind of late. What time is it? You absolutely can. Way? It's like nine, ten o'clock, somewhere in there. I don't know. Like a lot of stuff has kind of happened, but there was some space in between where you're rambling about movies. Mm. Mm. You're absolutely more than welcome to go home. I don't imagine there's going to be another crime in his local vicinity. We've heard that uh, one of these cars is stole per day, and uh, yeah. seems like that's already occurred. Do we well, know? that's I a mean, relief. Hmm. So you're of the mind, this is I talking to reps, you're of the hmm. mind that the motorcycle was the score of the day and not just his normal method of transportation. That's certainly, certainly as far as James has thought about it. Yes, okay. All right, Billy, we'll, uh, we'll get out of your hair. He is bald. But, um... <laughs> of course he is. Now, Billy, we'll get out of your luscious locks, but, uh... <laughs> Just one more thing before I leave here. I'm going to activate my just one more thing ability. Uh, when you oh. ask a subject leading questions, roll plus charm. Okay. Is there a, is there anything pertinent to my investigation that you've attempted to leave out so far? I roll a nine plus charm, which is an 11 for me. Okay. So on that, it means you get to ask two. What? Yep, I can either do, was that a lie? Was there something you left out that you didn't want me to notice? Which is the first one I'm asking. Uh, are you complicit with any ongoing criminal activity? Did you commit this specific crime? <laughs> or any of the questions from Investigator Mystery? Oh my god. Oh, I see. So, ask questions from this list. So, it was, yeah, you did, uh, something you left out you didn't want me to notice. Uh, Anything that uh, could actually be pertinent to my investigation. Something that might... Because I'd hate to have to come back and uh, wake you up at a different period of time and ask a question that, uh, that that I might need the answer to. Could you offer any available information such as? He thinks for a little while. Why the motorcycle? Well, that's a good point well made. Why the motorcycle? We didn't think he had a uh, taste for motorcycles. Heard the cars in the show. Yeah, 40, 45 cars. 10 of mine. And however much else of everybody else's. Why the motorcycle? I lift my finger. <laughs> hmm. I I will actually um I'll I'll leave it at just that question. All right. All right. So he is going to uh he closes the door behind him. Uh you hear some noises, and then uh you actually hear him go out the front and one of the the fancy more high tech cars. Uh, starts up, and he's leaving unless you stop him. Oh, good. I, I think that I would imagine, like, Max picking up, but as he, as Billy leaves, he would probably just ask, like, a little casual, like, you're so fixated on specifically Midnight. Is there any reason why? I think he just casually ask as he leaves. It's my bedtime. And then he goes. Okay, okay bye. Now, um, Max, you're local of the area. I am. It's down that direction. I point down the highway where the uh, motorcycle had been moving towards. Do so I there know? are, yeah, there are two specific, uh, the road forks. Uh, one direction takes you back to the center of town. The other takes you out uh, to kind of like a really empty area. It used to be like a major logging area until uh, forest fire came through, you know, 15 years ago. Now it's kind of just a bit of a mess. Uh, there have been some attempts to like regrow a lot of the forest, but funding's a bit of an issue. And, you know, there's always issues with more forest fires potentially coming through. Mm. Uh, so there's not a whole lot of community interest in uh, redeveloping that area. Uh, so to your knowledge, there's not really a whole lot going on out there. Okay. I think that, yeah. So Max would, would share this information, uh, highlighting especially like, you know, this sure this sure was a lot like the and then he'd, say, he'd probably weave it in kind of like this sure reminded me a lot of the forest fire that happened in, like down that way in fact, and and he would mention sort of 
the, the, the history of a couple forest fires that may have happened in his lifetime around here and how they kind of kind of looked like what happened and putting down that fork and so you know, the other one's down to Maine, back down to town. That's a good point to uh, well made, Max. If there's a fork down the end of the road, we might be able to choose which of those directions to go simply by where the fire appears to have burnt a recent local strip, perhaps, on the side of each road. Would you mind driving us down there in uh, good old Bessie, Max? I would certainly do it. It's I'd be curious to see why he didn't put those fires out if he was responsible for some of those interests. Who knows? He's just talking out loud to himself. Uh, but yeah, I guess we head back to Bessie get in mm -hmm. and take off in that direction and must stop. As as we get in though, while uh, Max is musing about, oh, why didn't he, you know, turn out the fires previously if he can turn out fires now? Well, Max, I know you're familiar with your uh, your standard uh, horror film affair. I happen to see a couple over your shoulder, and uh, you were wearing a, a T-shirt that had Night of the Living Dead George Romero on it mm. when I uh, mm -hmm. when I first encountered you. I just wanted to to to, to mention you might uh, be familiar from those kinds of films that uh, sometimes a, a a geist, a phantasm, a ghoul, a a a, a ne'er do well, an undead of some sort, will perish in one sort. Of a natural disaster, perhaps, maybe maybe a man-made disaster, and then manifest those disasters themselves afterwards in their mm. afterlife. I see what you're getting at. That's a that's a good movie plot. Was that uh, that wasn't Ghost Rider, was it? <laughs> <laughs> it could well have been. I didn't pay much attention to that film, Max. It was quite bad. I Max is not listening anymore. Max turns and goes to the car. <laughs> So, are I guess we're not, because he has, are we sure that we don't want any more information from the building that he is now no longer in? I'm, I'm treating uh, this uh, investigation as above board until entirely required otherwise. So the idea of trying to break in possibly uh, in order to gain more information from someone who, yeah, has been a bit withholding, but has their own grouchy reasons to be so. Seems no, a bit out of character for mine. No, yeah. I hear you. Uh, I guess, yeah, unless, unless stopped, we are in Bessie. Okay. So which fork do you take? You going back to town or are you going down the abandoned road? So we'd like to um, investigate the, the sides of the roads near each okay. of the fork to try and see where flame may have scarred recently. Sure. Yeah. So uh, I'm not even going to ask for a roll. Uh, so you more or less follow it down the abandoned road instead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was not going back towards town. I think that's where we would have been going anywho. Yeah. yeah. So you follow it for a while. How long... Are you, you're just going to follow until you reach the end of whatever? I mean, I think that the big thing would be like, if there is any sign of things that have been burnt and then, and then subsequently put out, I think we're go mostly trying to follow that lead as best we can. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you just go and it takes a while. Uh, whatever it was, it covered a fair bit of Ooh. distance. And then you see the car. Um, there is, a nice looking classic car stalled out in the middle of the road. Functionally abandoned. Mm. Mm. Is it has it been burnt to a crisp melted in any way? Or is it just it's just stalled? It's not crashed. It's just it's still It's it's just there. I mean you're still in your car. You gotta get close to it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh hmm. Would Max Oh gosh. You know what? I think in this instance, I'm going to enact uh, my weird ability. I want to use Max's trust your gut. So all the characters in this game normally have magic, but there's alternate rules for kind of an ability of theirs. I, is there a chance that I could trust my gut And as far as whether or not there is... Oh gosh, I'm trying to think of how to phrase it. Whether or not I feel that the creature is like still here. This, the trust your gut is basically consult your instincts to figure out what you should do next. Okay. And then you, it's basically like the, yeah, 
I, if I'm is, successful, I kind of get a tip. Yeah, get a tip from the keeper is basically what it is if I'm successful. On a miss, I am in instantly in danger. So Okay. So that's that's the risk. So do I have the A OK? Yeah. Yeah, you can roll it. Oh god. It's plus <laughs> it's a five. <laughs> okay. So on the on the plus side, I gain experience. Um uh the downside is in this situation and you know, I'll I'll take if you think that uh, leading into danger would just be like me getting out of the car and then doing something stupid. I think I, I'm I'm willing to to bend for that for sure. So just on a miss, your instincts lead you into danger, is the specific phrasing. Trying to think of how that would work here. Um, so you, you kind of just reach down into yourself to think like, you know, what is the best thing I could possibly do here? What's going on? And what would they do in the movies? Where should I go? And oddly enough, you're kind of compelled to drive into the woods. It's huh. not it's not that bad. Uh like as far as driving, it's fairly flat and there's not a lot of underbrush, so you can actually navigate your car through and you just ignore the car. You follow the burn marks. Okay. Yeah. All right. I was so, saying I would say that this makes sense to like this. This seems like a thing that they would do in the movies. Like this is a mislead. This is a mislead. And then I turn the turn the wheel. So and, and steer more, into the forest. More or less following your instincts. You just blot the car out of your mind and say, nope, not important. It is. If I look at this car, I'm going to miss whatever is down this path. And you floor it straight into the woods. Uh, give me a act under pressure. Uh, just because oh, you very much I'm are driving through the woods, driving yeah. through the woods. Uh, that is uh, let's see, seven. Play, I mean, it's going to be a mixed success, seven to nine. At, I'm going to say this is a what could go wrong. Oh, oh, a hundred percent. So when you charge into immediate danger without hedging, oh, a hundred percent. Uh, I get hold two, so I can basically of these three abilities. I can choose to spend these points at any time to either inflict an extra harm, so in combat, reduce a harm in combat, or like if we get it from another, some other way, or take plus two forward on an act under pressure roll. I think that, yeah, that absolutely. So that was an eight, so it would be, I think I use one of those holds to bump this up to 10 for sure. Oh, okay. That seems so, you, so logical, yes. So you are just cruising through the forest, like the trees aren't even there. Uh, you, you never considered, uh, a career in stunt driving and, uh, you're after this experience, very sure that you'd never want to do it again, but, uh, you are just cruising through the forest. You can see where the burn marks are. You can see the general devastation. Like the forest is still on fire. Uh, oddly enough, like whatever is happening here is so much worse than just the passing flame that James described to you. And you are just homing in on it on your car. And then mm. you see it. You see a large figure on fire on a motorcycle cruising through the forest, and they're just freaking out. You can't really tell what's going on because fire and hard to see. And also you're kind of focused on, you know, dealing with trees. Uh, but your quarry is in sight. What do you do? James, this goes for you too. You have options. Uh, I'm going to uh, place one hand in the very back pocket of my shorts, and that hand will emerge with brass knuckles on. I would say Max sees what you're doing, and he leans into the back seat. Oh, wait, there's no back seat. Oh, no. <laughs> you've got, you've got, uh, you've got yeah. your golf club just kind of yeah, across I got a the back. Bat. Yeah, yeah. Like, there's a space oh, back like there. And it's easy yeah, to like grab kind the of golf up club behind the seats, kind of by the window. Yeah. All right. I grab. It's a. I got a, a baseball bat. Oh, my it's a baseball bat. I thought it was a golf club. My, my parents would want me to have a golf club. I don't want to have a golf club. I don't oh no, it was just the first on the list. And yeah, yeah. no, okay, no. So you no, got a baseball bat. Is it a wood one or an aluminum one? Uh, let's see. Two, two harm. I don't know. It feels like it has to. I feel like wood. Wood felt feels right. Okay, so you got a nice slugger. Okay. Yeah, it's a it's a wooden one. 
So you are, uh, you guys are just going to try and clobber this thing as you drive by. Well, I think Is it's that more what just I'm... like I, I saw you got okay an, uh, equipped with something, and I'm... I just immediately grabbed something. I'm, I'm following James's lead as okay. The so despite the fact that you're civilian, you are driving through the woods, uh, in a, the burning forest, uh, yeah. past trees and everything, you still manage to do it flawlessly, one handed, with your hands holding a bat uh left left hand probably i also yeah. want your I got right a lot of practice being reason. a bad driver being a bad driver for so long has made me really good at being a bad driver in you've this looped situation. back around i've looped back around i like it's a it's i got a negative and it overflowed got an overflow error <laughs> <laughs> it's an unsigned okay integer. yeah so Unlike you, as you close in on this thing, it's not dri- it's not nearly as fast as it was e- either, and it's not driving particularly well. Uh, purely without like having any expertise, you can tell this motorcyclist is not really built or experienced for driving through the woods. Mm. Mm. Okay. Now, Max, if you uh, yeah. if you can drive us up. Uh... Perhaps beside. I know you don't want to get your 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 vehicle damaged, so I'm not gonna not gonna suggest you do some sort of a pit maneuver to try and take this motorcycle down. But if you if you hit me that bad, I might take a swing at one of the wheels. Oh, I'll say I'll say it's all right. Bessie Bessie likes a little bit of roughing up. It makes her stronger. It, then floor it right into that goddamn motorcycle, Max. And I and I just kind of I I, I drop the baseball bat into your lap and. And I floor it. I floor it in. Okay, so you're you're just ramming the motorcycle. I I get is that I'm doing what okay. uh, exactly what James give, tells me to do. Give me a uh kick some fender. Give me a kick some oh. fender roll. Uh me since I'm the driver or raps since raps has the you. Ra- okay. Oh, well, are you ramming the okay. motorcycle or is yeah. James hitting it with a bat? Because you can only do one of those unless yeah, you're really say. trying I, something no, yeah, crazy. That, yeah. That's a James. You wanted to hit the tires with the bat. That was your goal. I was right? thinking of knocking one of those tires out. Okay. I think you, so, James. I think I'm going to need a. I'm going to need uh kick some fender from you and uh Max. That sounds like a power of heart. Yeah, uh, absolutely. For me. Yeah. So basically, power of heart as the mundane when fighting a monster. It whenever you help someone, you don't even have to roll. You automatically help as a ten. So you just get a plus one. Hell yeah. Uh, I also get a plus one from the plus tough that I have. Other than that... Uh, oh, oh, okay, so that's eight on the die with a total of plus two for a ten. Okay, so uh, let's see. If you roll a ten, choose an extra effect, gain advantage forward or give forward to another hunter, terrible harm, suffer less harm, or force them where you want them. Yeah, I'm going to force them off of the bike. Okay, so, so you were just aiming say, for the... I, I'm sorry, I just wanted to... Bef- in, just in case it changes something about the way mm. it shakes down, I want to use my other hold to reduce a harm by trying to do like a sick twist in the car. So get him like in prime position. Okay, so, so you're, you're going to get him in prime position so he can hit, but get him away before he gets set on fire. That That's like, yeah. This is that's a burning the, motorcycle. That's the minus one harm suffered that's my last hold from the what could go wrong okay okay uh so you uh so you're james you are more or less just home running the person off the bike is what you're trying to do Uh, effectively either i want to destabilize the vehicle such that they fall off or just knock them off either way i want them off the vehicle you gotta tell me which one you're doing because it matters okay sure um i i will be striking the uh oh boy I will strike at the uh, character. Wheel's very okay. low. It's going to be harder to hit. Okay. Yeah. So you you more or less just lean out, wind up, and home run the giant flaming figure off the bike. And you do. Oh, my Lord. And it goes tumbling. And the bike continues and just disappears into the forest. As you notice, a large flaming man roll to the stop of the forest floor you've just home run him in the back of the head and does he have a head he has a head does it look like does he look (laughs) uh 
So mm. you've never seen a creature like this before, but that's not quite true. You've seen creatures like this before in illustrations, but never like a clear photograph. You're looking at a very charred-looking Sasquatch who is pretty mad at you. Huh. I'm just going to, uh, like, very surreptitiously, while uh, they're looking at me in any sort of anger, pull a cannon from my pocket, and then put it back in my pocket. You take a photo of him. And mm -hmm. he collapses. Just <laughs> absolutely out cold. Whatever you have done, it... It caused harm. And in fact, he's still burning, like, a lot. Does he seem to be the source of the flame or on fire? He is on fire. Oh, and it smells no. bad. Oh, yeah, the acrid stench of burning fur. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start trying to put him out with, uh, with tamping things down, if possible. I don't okay. want him to die. I would I'm going to say that's an act under pressure. Mm-hmm. Trying to put out fire with my hands? Absolutely. Okay. It is a seven. Okay. So <laughs> you, I mean, you more or less just get in there with your hands and it, it hurts. You, you very much do burn yourself kind of bad trying to put this mm -hmm. thing out, but you do succeed. Uh, mark two harm for just burns. Cool, cool. Uh, but you do manage to like put him out and he's still alive. Uh, but he does definitely look kind of worse for the wear. No. <laughs> well, that, that's exactly okay, the next I, thing I'm going to do. Well, if, was... uh, if given any ability, I will try and find a way to bind and restrain this creature before it wakes up. I'm just going to assume your character has handcuffs as like one yep. of the things you haven't marked just because it makes sense for you to probably have zip ties or handcuffs yeah. of some variety. Uh, so you have handcuffed Bigfoot. <laughs> it, huh. Barely, it, if he wasn't so charred, uh, it would have probably not fit on his big wrists. But you, uh, mm -hmm. you, you, you've handcuffed Bigfoot. Now what do you do? You are easily like half a mile into the forest. I mean, I, I think Max come, comes, looks around the corner and goes, "Oh my god, oh my god!" You handcuff Bigfoot, put him in the trunk, put him in the trunk, <laughs> and then I try and help. I, I try I, and start lifting him. I don't know if you help me to so do it, but I, I get down I, there and I, I, I try and grab his big feet. Okay. So despite being big and reasonably heavy, you guys can get him kind of into the trunk. The problem Perfect. is he is too big for this trunk. Like, you've got a big trunk. Bigfoot is bigger than your trunk. Yeah, it makes sense. Mm. Oh, shoot. And then Mac, so then you cut, it cuts to Max sitting there with the hand, his hands on the back of his head. Oh man. You do just, realize like you could probably cram him into the second seat if you pushed it back. Like clear out all of the stuff behind the seat and push the seat back as far as it goes. You could maybe cram him in there. Okay. I say, now James, you're not gonna like this. Or maybe you will. I don't know you that well. You're gonna have to you're gonna have to ride in the trunk. That's more than fine with me. There were a couple that of times where right. I was flying overseas and someone had to store me his overhead luggage. I just, it's a lot cheaper. You remind me of so many movie characters. And that's a compliment. Why, thank you, Max. I take it as a compliment. A high praise from you. It kind of served the film. All right, now let's put Bigfoot in the car. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you put Bigfoot in your car. Yep. And he's uh, just and there. He's, he's, he's just awkwardly folded up. And you're going to probably have, uh, have like his elbow in your face for the entire ride. But you can, in fact, drive with an unconscious Bigfoot. In okay. your car with so, you. So we saw the bike take off, take off into the woods further. Yeah, it kept going. I, also, the forest is on fire. Like, yeah, that is a that is a thing. Mm. So I mean, and like, <laughs> probably obvious question. It doesn't look like. I guess. It, mm, I guess maybe the way of phrasing it is. How unnatural, as we got closer, how unnatural did the bike look? Did it just look like a normal bike but fire? Or did it, was there some kind of a tell, like something about it that as it drove I mean, away, did it look green, like it was steering? That it's, certainly was yeah. kind of unnatural. Yeah. You didn't the, really get to it, see too much of the rest of it just because. Yeah. But I guess the thing is, Max trying to get a hunch of 
the origin of the flames being the bike or being the big oh, foot. Definitely. It, the I bike. think he, he could he could tell it was the bike. So yeah, as okay. soon as more or less you disconnected Bigfoot from the bike, the fire switched from green to regular orange. Mm. And that's right. genuinely true of like everything that it sets on fire starts green, turns orange. Mm. Interesting. Uh, I guess the trying to figure out whether or not Max would want to go follow the bike. Because we have Bigfoot, but he's also unconscious. He's also unconscious, and you don't want him waking up next to you when you're trying to drive. Might, might send you flying with an elbow or some sort. Yeah, so I, I guess I guess the two options would be wait for Bigfoot to wait. I guess there's th wait for Bigfoot to wake up, go back to town with Bigfoot, or chase the bike. And I think now, that uh, I think Max is looking to James at this point. Max, let me make a suggestion to you. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, 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 were, you, you knew that you were working in the film business this entire time. You knew you were working in the, in, in, in trade. Uh, mm -hmm. you, you may not have known the, the organization that you happen to work for, but your boss and my boss are basically the same person. Fran Cheska, first yes. name Fran, is, Francesca. is reportedly quite a lovely woman, a very, very stern head of this chapter. I think we should probably go see her. Say, um, you know, are you familiar with your uh, your problem with flaming Sasquatches? I mean, I think that I... Hmm. Fundamentally, it... I want to take it back to her and see if she has a room that we can perhaps store this man in for a period of time until he happens to rouse from his slumber and we can interrogate him. I was just trying to say, because I really... It feels like it would get too out of hand to be able to just trust your gut too many times. But I'm just so, I'm just wondering how, like, with how many movies Max has seen, and he, I think his mind being so focused on, there's always a twist. There's always a twist. He's like, but maybe the twist is that it is Bigfoot. And I think he's just racking his brain, and he's, like, really unsure of himself. So I think he's pro he probably would just take whatever direction he gets. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you think, take, take Bigfoot back to Francesca, leave the scary bike in the woods exactly although for what it's worth while we're in town we should probably tip off the uh the fire services that there might be a little bit of a ruckus in this area all right it is getting bad so okay mm. so you you pile into the car james just folds himself up and climb climbs in the trunk and mm -hmm. off you go give me an act under pressure there's no risk of like actual damage but how well do you drive out of the burning forest and I would also say, like, there's probably some residual nerves from Bigfoot being in my passenger seat. Oh, yeah. I mean, you can smell sure. him, and he smells rank. Uh, that is going to be a 10. Okay. So almost as fast as you came in, you just drive right out of the woods. I, in fact, I'm not even going to ask you to roll for act under pressure for driving through forests anymore. Uh, <laughs> it's good at it. So, man. yeah, you're, you have marked proficiency in driving through forests. Uh, <laughs> so you, you get back to town. Uh, in fact, you just take the short way. You just keep going through the woods, screw the roads. Uh, and you get to, uh, the, the retro zone and your boss is there and Ooh. you can see her through the front window and she can see huh. you. She can't see your passenger that well. What do you do? Oh, that's a great question, because, yeah, we've got... <laughs> I suppose James would know that we probably stopped as... Uh, in the, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think I think step one is I wave a little bit. A little bit um, kind of, like, awkwardly, because by all accounts, she should not know that I... Or, like, she would think that I would have nothing to do with anything strange. Yeah. I'd, I'd say he's... She thought you were just playing hooky. Which He's... normally she wouldn't care about, but why would you come yeah. back to work after playing hooky? I think he's, yeah, he's smiling awkwardly because th this is definitely after normal closing time by now for oh, sure. Yeah. It's too. like 10, 11 o'clock. He's got a very awkward smile, waves a little bit, and then I get out of the car and I think I open up the trunk. Okay. I like, I bet first I bang on the trunk like one quick boom, and then I, and then I open it. Mm -hmm. Cause it's I got, I got to fill myself. Gotta unlock okay. it that way. So 
uh francesca comes out just because this is too weird not not to and nothing inside the store is that important and she looks at you and then she looks at james and is like oh you had to go pick him up sorry you had to go pick him up well yeah he's he's the hunter that we called why did you have to go pick him up where was he oh yeah i and then i guess i kind of Itch the I'll, back of my head a little bit, and I just look over at James. I'll offer my hand and say, Detective James, teacher. It's good to meet you. I actually came to this property a little bit earlier in the day to try and meet you, but um, got waylaid uh, talking to your lovely... Uh, w- w- Max, um, sorry, did you mention your last name? MacGuffin. Max MacGuffin here. Lovely employee. Really, really could move up in the chain. Possibly she, needs to know a little bit more about the industry, she, maybe. She looks at you... And then she looks at Max, then she rubs her face, and then she spots Bigfoot. Oh, and also, we caught Bigfoot. Yeah. Why? Well, I think if you, you go out to the, uh, the the forked road that leads to an abandoned area, you'll find that there's a forest fire out there. And I think you'll find that that forest fire was started by this hooligan. looks at you, and then she's just inside the store. You didn't even see her go in. She's just in there calling multiple people that's a good point we probably should have uh, checked in with the fire department before checking in you with guys work. had a cell phone the entire time that's i mean really i, I was under point. the impression there wasn't good cell service because it's there a, isn't it, but thriller. it still works with emergency services that is true mm. i was driving what's your excuse <laughs> I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna start character. trying to uh drag uh bigfoot inside okay uh I mean, he's limp. He's heavy, but you can get him in. Uh, while I, I uh, <laughs> Fran is doing a bunch of calls, I just want to shout out over the top of things. Where's your interrogation room, miss? <laughs> she just, like, mid-call turns, like, mechanically towards you, hangs up the phone, and then looks at Bigfoot again, now that he's lit, and she just lips out. She is visibly angry at you okay because okay, okay you have a burnt bigfoot in her store and honestly like it's mostly mostly what you can catch from her is what did you do to big jim mm. oh no now why you say big jim is this uh this uh this this fella known to you so max you yeah. know big jim You've i've seen him before big jim. Yeah, I know big he's Jim. the big he's the big bearded guy that likes to buy anime. Oh my god, that's Big Jim. Wait, so you just you just always assumed I, he just like had a hair issue. And as, as like, I look at him, but he he doesn't look it's not like now that he's in the light I can tell he looks like Big Jim. He looks like Bigfoot. He's got Big now. Jim's like red coat and weird hat that kind yeah. of blends with his hair and it, he's like kind of cool board shorts. <laughs> oh. This this big gym. Uh I mean you guys can't possibly be mad at me for any of this. I didn't know you I'm not mad at you. All... Oh good, thank you. I'm mad at I'm mad at him too, <laughs> then. Yeah, I'm mad How at him too you. as well. Just riding down the highway, completely lit on fire. <laughs> That's hooligan behavior. I do you know why he was on fire? Did you bother to ask me beforehand or even talk to me at all? Okay, so that's a great know, point. I figured do you know it was probably why Big Jim would be out there? Um not as such. Hence my asking for an interrogation room. I You were supposed to come to me directly. Or barring that, he was supposed to have you call me. Why did neither of you do that? Well when you're in the uh when you're in the line of fire. I don't mean that literally. You need to act with haste. Precision, confidence, none of those actions are compatible with picking up a cell phone to call your boss. I, it, I just work I'm, at a rental store. I, uh, this is a strange Tuesday When were you me. under fire earlier today? Now, that's a good point well made, and it's something I wanted to actually get to. You see the matted fare of this, uh, this beast, this big gym, as you mentioned, the, the, the burning, the acrid stench and so on. Yeah? I didn't do that. Now... The fact he's unconscious, that's me. That was all me. I'll take responsibility just, wholeheartedly for me. So she, 
you saying that, the moment you take responsibility, I think she's actually going to hit you. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> she is. Sick. So what she is doing is she leaps over the counter directly at you in kind of like a, a tackle. And mm -hmm. she is scrabbling for the photograph that she now knows you have. Mm. Um, I'm going to try and uh, palm her away with one hand to keep the, the rest of my belongings safe and comfortable with the other. Uh, okay. I'm assuming I'm rolling some sort of a... Probably act under pressure. Oh, Either right act then. under pressure... Or... What is it? Um, I, I haven't rolled yet. Um, okay. Because it, it could also be... Uh... Uh, palm, palm some face if you wanted to roll that either I don't know I there's not exactly I a think, wrestling check I think I would prefer to try and palm some face if possible okay it, I mean it does say this is used when you're fighting something that's fighting you back I, I'm gonna consider trying to keep them at arm's length is a fight so yeah get, mm -hmm. give me a a uh, palm palm some face roll cool so that's a, a seven eight with my tough modifier okay uh, so, oh, how question. does this even work? So they okay. inflict their attack harm rating on me. Question. Can I, uh, roll protect someone? Yes. On Francesca. Okay. So, <laughs> roll, roll for, uh, protecting Francesca. I, I've known Francesca longer. Mm -hmm. Uh, that would be an eight. Okay. Uh, you protect them okay, but you suffer some harm. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna assume kind of the rules counter, uh, mm -hmm. more or less just uh, you two instead get in a tussle and she gets the photograph. Yeah, I think. yeah, I think I I think I st I step in mostly like I just I know her better. I'm like no no yeah. no, don't hit my so, boss. Yeah, so Max, I think I get paid. you catch the palm to the face and. Oh. <laughs> And Francesca gets the photo. Do I mark harm? Uh, no, no. I mean, unless oh. unless James is really trying to mark harm. Uh, no, I'm assuming no. it's a zero harm. Mostly, I... mostly it's embarrassing, and you make a mental note to remove, uh, delete that part of the footage later because there's a security <laughs> camera. Uh, okay. She gets the photograph, and before you can even do anything else, she's torn it to shreds, yeah. and then she burns it. No. Oh. I mean, uh, now you're gonna have to start explaining to me why you've uh, why you've asked me to come here and investigate a crime. And as soon as I've started doing so, as soon as I've started gathering evidence, as soon as I've started knocking skulls and trying to investigate and interrogate people, you just so she just rounds on you and she's just jamming a finger into your chest. Your <gasps> your your palms are busy, so you cannot block her because you are still mm -hmm. just mashing your hand into Bax's face. Uh, uh, and she is just rounding on you, and she is just hissing. You were supposed to come to me first. You are not supposed to do anything else without consulting with a local expert. And what do you do? You go off and you just, you mess it all up. You mess, you mess it all up. And I am yeah, you're so right. lucky I caught you before you did any greater harm to this fantastic person who is now actually getting back up. He looks kind of fine, like weirdly was fine. I was like, I can. Now, J Big Jim's a he's a good guy. I like him. Mm, I can mm. confirm. I understand this now, but no one told me it was Big Jim when I was uh, swinging a baseball bat at the back uh, of his head. Yeah, no one told me Big Jim was a was a big foot. So I mean, honestly, as much as I don't want you to hit her, you're kind of right. I feel like you should have got a little bit more heads up right away. But I, just, I'm new I, to the business. You were supposed so to contact me for heads up. I do not give out information over the phone. I do not say sense. any of that stuff in public. We say all of the hunter stuff inside this store, which is noise-proof and bug-proof. That makes and sense. And magically Jessica, warded. That's a good point well made. However, I'd ask you to uh, have a look at the evidence in this situation. Now, just make yourself a little bit dispassionate from your emotions at this point in time and, and have a look. There's a forest fire that we not only prevented, also gave the local town early warning. It hasn't off. been prevented. I, I can see say. it out the window. Okay, so what I'm saying is the hypothetical additional forest fires that may have continued if I didn't dismount this. They are continuing. Vehicle. Yeah, sure, but they want. There might have been more of them. Francesca, what do we do? Uh, 
Well, one, panic, because two, there's a burning, burning Dullahan on the loose, driving through the woods, setting it all on fire, and we need to find it and stop it now. Okay. I got two seats in my car. I, and then I, he just, I just kind of very panicked, kind of like walking back and forth. Like, I, um, I, I would like to inspect Big Jim. Okay. So Big Jim, apart from his clothes being burnt, is fine. He also has yeah, removed your handcuffs, and he is very not happy with you. But he doesn't say mm-hmm. anything. Um, I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna start taking I, the cuffs off. I say, oh no, I say, they've been removed. Yeah, he, oh, sure. he, I say, sorry, they, they Big are, Jim. I, they're just I didn't sad, know. twisted scrap on the ground. Big Jim just kind of huffs at you, Max. You are, uh, he's not buying anime from you anymore. Oh my, um, well, Big Jim. Commission. I understand I might not be able to take you to a room in order to ask you some questions at this point in time, but there are a couple of questions that you are going to need to answer. Big Jim is just going to reach over, pick you up, move you to the side, and then walk out the building with Francesca. I follow. Not very cooperative for uh, people who want me to solve a crime. Usually they give me evidence and uh, interrogation rooms. Okay. I barge out the, I barge out the door. I, I follow them. At this point, I'm... I'm big in on, well, first of all, I do like Big, big Jim. Mm-hmm. So I trust. I'm out. I'm following. I'm curious. Okay. I'm going to quickly uh, uh, squiz at the uh, the uh, aisles on either side of me as we're leaving, looking for anything that looks like it's related to Headless Horseman or the Dullahan. Uh, roll a, uh, shoot. What would this be? I guess... It could just Roll be straight law. investigate a mystery, probably. Sure. Um, that... Actually, you know what? Uh, keep the roll. It's uh, act under pressure. Mm-hmm. You're picking something quick. And that makes more sense. <laughs> yeah, it okay. feels like there should be a search action. Yeah. Because like like. uh, investigate a mystery is too much like ask a question. And I want like straight yeah. up, do you find the clue? Mm-hmm. I fail. I roll a six. Okay, you grab um, what would be vaguely headless horseman e. Uh, you grab a the hand, um, handless horseman. The first, no, you you grab the first <laughs> season of BoJack Horseman. <laughs> I, uh, this is going to be interesting. This is probably going to give me a clue and maybe some insights on my life. Or you're just bringing it with you. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It sets off the store alarm. No, I, I turn around and I go, oh, no. <laughs> now, so French, not only French are you withholding big... evidence from me, you're withholding information about the Bojack horse man. All right. <laughs> the, the famous cryptid Bojack By the horseman. Way, <laughs> Mark, Mark, um, Mark experience, by the way. Congrats, I forgot to mention congrats that. Congrats on experience, yeah. <laughs> so you were there just indignantly yelling at them. Uh, the, the Bigfoot Francesca, who is heading for her truck, and Max, and you are just waving the first season of BoJack Horseman, which, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, is generally considered kind of bad, I think. I don't know. It I did starts, not like any of that The first few show. episodes started slow. Yeah, okay. they ended up in a position, uh, ultimately, where the first three episodes lured a bunch of the cr- uh, critics into thinking it was a completely different show than it was, because it's a bait-and-switch kind of first uh, season. Ah, okay. Uh, anyway. And I don't think they even respond. I think just as a three, they look at you, they see what you're waving at them, and then they just continue <laughs> on. Because it's just not worth even acknowledging what you've just done. <laughs> I, I think that Max turns around and feels like a little bit of like, for, for some reason, he feels some responsibility for you, even as just a civilian who got picked up by you, basically. And he hand, has both of his hands on his face, pulling his cheeks down really hard, like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> James, I want you to mark one harm. As your self esteem mm-hmm. just takes a bit oh, of a hit, no. it'll come back at some point. But right now, meh. Yeah. I. It's also worth mentioning we we didn't talk about a, a whole mechanic that I don't think we like needed to have used at this point. But there's also a. This is more for wraps. There's a luck mechanic. If you want to guaranteed get a twelve, you can spend a point of luck. But it usually comes with some kind of twist. For a lot of the playbooks, it's a bad thing. 
for mundane it's not but that's kind of one of the few good like outwardly good things mm. that's just a you thing also to know you can don't get luck back it is correct it's a permanent it, resource yeah you can only get four back by leveling up i think and then when I you run out of so. luck you are doomed at which point i can just start throwing the kitchen sink at you uh because yeah. you are you are out of luck and running out of time mm -hmm. All right, are well, you I'm, going to I'm, are you going to uh, mark luck to avoid both Jack Horseman and yourself? No, Absolutely I, not. <laughs> yeah, okay. no, no, no. I wasn't safe to do it. I was just <laughs> more like, it is technically possible. Okay. All right. I'm following. So, so, you, uh, they, so Francesca has a big truck. It's not like one say. of the really ridiculous glam trucks that you see. This is just like a genuinely good workhorse of a truck. Uh, and you know she's done some work on it, but you don't know what kind of work. Without even asking, it, I, I attempt I attempt to get in the car. Okay, so she she's not going to stop. Try. You. She's not even going to stop James if he hops in. Uh, she's just good zeroing in on getting in, getting the car started. Now, Big Jim just hops in the in the back in the bed because more space. Uh, mm -hmm. Previously, like you had his knees jammed into his nose uh, to Sorry, get him Big into Jim. your car, and so uh, you can either hop in the uh, the cab or you can. Uh, there's there's still plenty of space if you want to get in the back with Big Jim. I get in. The I'd back love to get Jim. in the back. Okay, oh, wait. So you, you th no, there's two enough. empty it's seats. I know, but there's just two empty seats in the car, and we both elect to sit in the truck. In okay, the back. that's so, so good. So Big Jim is just kind of uh, kind of in a corner, but not like too far off because it would throw the balance of the truck off. And uh, more or less, like, he just grabs a side and uh, she just peels out of there. Like, she's she's yeah. going and she's going way faster than would be safe for either for anybody to be in the bed of the truck. Uh, but I use this weirdly, whole time to apologize to Big Jim. I'm, like, I'm okay. doing it the whole time, even as we're going so, super fast. So uh, one thing you do know about Big Jim is that he he cannot speak. He can sign. Mm -hmm. And all you know is yes and no, I think. Unless you mystically know uh, sign language. Nah, I, I don't yeah, think I Max would. It, okay. it, I don't imagine, I don't think there was any like big cheesy hit movies where he would have picked up that information. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so at, at Not, some point, yeah. at some point, Big Jim had taught you yes and no. And mm -hmm. that's really all you needed. Uh, okay. And so he he honestly, for the most part, uh, he seems kind of non-committal. He's he's mad, but just by body language, you can definitely tell he's more interested in what you're driving after than what was in the past. Mm -hmm. Great. Now, Jim, I feel like I've got to offer an apology to you. I thought he you were some sort of a beast or a ghoulie. <gasps> There's just kind of a... <laughs> <laughs> through the matted hair. Mm -hmm. All right. I mean, I'm I'm just... I'm along for the ride. Okay, so you guys start cruising, and um, Francesca opens up kind of that center window in the um, the the back window of her truck, mm -hmm. so you can you can actually talk to her. And she says, uh, "We're going to be going pretty fast, so hold on to those handles, because uh, I I am not turning around to grab you. Uh, you know, don't want to have any roadkill left behind in my wake, but uh, the forest and everybody around here is way more important than just one of you two jokers." So, uh, your number one job is to make sure you do not die. Your number two job is, if you see the Dullahan riding, you are to tell me which direction it is if I do not already see it, and if a opportunity presents itself to you to somehow knock that thing uh, off balance, you do so immediately. And I then you're off. Up. I give a thumbs okay. up and then immediately snap my hand to the back to the car <laughs> handle. Okay. So you guys are cruising absurdly fast like faster than even the cop cars that you see go by and you you spot for a moment the sheriff uh who is just kind of slack shot as you just zoom by you don't know how fast you're going and some kind of I tickle win. in your gut max you realize that this is probably an enchanted truck for it to be going this fast because no normal car should be able to move this fast nor this uh dexterously through a yeah. burning forest I think I think in the midst of it, I, I shout, so I, what do you got in this bad boy? It seems it's going way too fast. And yeah, uh, you know. 
Yeah, it's your words are functionally lost yeah. on the wind. No, I I am intending to shout to the wind. Okay. And after a while, um I guess you hear the screaming. How could you not? It's mm. it's, it's so loud. And in fact, uh it almost feels like the more fire there is, the more screaming you can hear. And uh, before you know it, it, you can see a parallel road uh kind of into the distance and you can see a green speck just speeding along it. Uh just barely slower than you. Okay. Uh, I'm going to start muffle, making muffling sounds against the hand and just like wildly gesturing. Oh, no, no B- Big Jim, stop. If you talk to Big Jim, he puts the hand up. But if you're not trying to talk <laughs> to him, there is no hand. Fair. Um, there's actually a, uh, a motorcycle, actually, on a parallel road to us. It's a little slower than it's been. Have you, have you seen it? I'm just gonna like like turning back to talk directly through the wind, uh, the window rather that's been opened. Okay, so you jam your face through the window. She her head snaps to the right, sees it, and she just cuts to the right through the trees. She doesn't even care. She's ramping off rocks, and the truck is just taking it like a champion, uh, including mm. just blasting through a couple of bushes, uh, like they're not even there, and almost uh, within like half a minute, you are just on this thing. Uh, right behind it. What do you do? Hmm. Is there a, uh, could we, could I read a bad situation? Is that sure. applicable to try and, yeah, that would be a, a nine. Okay. So, uh, let's see. You get to hold one. So I get to ask one of the following questions. Uh, I guess the, the, yeah, I guess it was between because there's what's the biggest not no not what's the biggest threat, what's the most vulnerable, and then there's also what's the best way to protect the um. I mean, you have other questions if you want to come up with something else. Yeah, I I guess I guess my question would be like, is there anything around me that I could throw to keep it yes. off, like to try and hit it off balance? Okay, so there are a couple of things. There is a uh, a. Is it called like a gun safe, a gun chest or whatever in the back? Uh, Mm -hmm. And Big Jim is like slightly covering it, but you could probably get in there. Uh, What else would somebody... There is... uh, There there looks to be also some kind of like shovely looking thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, let me see. What would have... um... May I mechanically help out here? As sure. I I carry uh, as a uh, as a PI as a gumshoe, I carry a liquor flask on me at all times, uh, which I can imagine if it collided appropriately with a vehicle on fire might go up a treat. Oh, so you have a flask of something? Sorry, I was mm-hmm. slightly distracted. Okay, a flask uh, of liquor is always on me. Okay, with an attempt to set the fire a fire. <laughs> well, more to try and debalance it via some sort of yeah. I can, oh yeah, like a backdraft kind of a yeah. I see. Yeah. Oh, hmm. I mean, you know, honestly, uh, Rito, you've got three options. You have what looks to be a big shovel. You have okay. a fire extinguisher, and you have a gun safe, and you don't know what's inside of it. Interesting. Uh, <laughs> in his head, he he sees a like a little math equation. One plus question mark equals two. Uh, <laughs> I I don't know. I get because the the motorcycle itself this whole time I, I I don't know if I've the motorcycle itself is on fire or it's just setting everything around it on fire. The motorcycle is on fire too. Yeah. Yeah, it is on fire. The yeah, the Dullahan okay. is on fire. The motorcycle is on fire, and everything around you is on fire. You do notice that Francesca cannot approach the thing because uh, as soon as she starts getting close. Uh, her car, car starts getting kind of charred. All right. I, I think that I give the old fire extinguisher a toss. Is that probably a act under pressure? Oh, it's gotta be. Uh, or, you know, you honestly, know? if you're chucking it at it, I'd say that's, uh, that's a chuck some extinguisher. Pipe. Yeah. All right. I, I'm happy to do it. Let's see. <laughs> I got a 12. Okay. Whoa. You, uh, so you just, uh, I I guess in a moment of, uh, 
uh, divine inspiration or something, you bust the valve off the thing, so it's just spraying wildly, and then you just hurl it at, at the motorcycle unerringly, kind of like a weird rocket javelin. And despite physics saying you probably shouldn't be able to do that, you just bean it. Not only do you bean it, it just starts getting doused because, I, I don't know, let's say the uh, fire extinguisher actually does wrap itself kind of around rather than just bouncing off. And so now you have a partially burning Dullahan that is being doused repeatedly by a whipping hose of a fire extinguisher. Okay. And it says on, on a 12 as well, I get to pick an extra effect. So I think for flavor, because of how inspirational that is, I think, well, oh, I mean, okay, here's the question. Normally this role, I would get inflicted harm. I guess that doesn't make a whole lot of sense in this scenario anyways, though. No, it's inflicting harm. No, it's no, no, no. One, that I, cause cause norm, normally in the, the role, I would take damage as well is normally how it goes. So one oh. of these responses, one of these bonuses is suffering no harm. You so know, I, I guess I'm going to say you probably don't take any. Because uh, okay. one of the things you can do with kick some ass is uh, say if you're shooting somebody, that is, I believe, is that a kick some ass? How do you shoot someone in this game? I think I it know. has. I, I think it has to be. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it is. I, it's just it as a, you just inflict more harm than they will inflict to you usually. Well, but one of Com the points combat is like, in this can, is you, deadly. Yeah. I, I guess my the point I would make is I know you can shoot something from afar, and if it doesn't have a ranged attack, it can't do anything to you. So I think yeah. this is one of those where you are fine. Uh, yeah. Okay. The main question so is: then, Do you want it to do more damage to the thing, or do you want it to uh, force force them where you want them? I don't think you can knock it off the bike just with that uh yeah with that in mind i think that i would um i think maybe like flavor wise what would maybe make sense i guess is holding the advantage so all of the hunters involved have but plus one forge because so it's like kind of you know okay. it's kind of maybe a little bit shaky it's a little bit off balance i think that's the flavor so way to look it at just it says it just says give it to another hunter all hunters involved oh get plus one forward I think that's I think I still go with that. Yeah, plus one forward to all hunters involved in the fight get plus one forward. I, so I guess that's me too. We Wait, both Where is that? Where are you getting advanced that? Advanced uh, on the 12 plus. Under advanced on a 12 plus. Oh. Wait, I don't have that. What? Oh, sh what? I got it out of your book. Wait, I'm page 115, yeah? Oh shoot. I I'm got a different thing here. Yeah, I'm looking at the oh, monster you're... of the week revised hunter reference sheets. Oh. Do you know what page that the, is? Here, I linked it. I linked it in the. Um, it's the thing I linked into our chat. Okay. Nope. That's that's Raps's. Uh, which one did you link? The one right Just above, above that. Uh oh, oh that one. Oh yeah, there it is. Oh, uh, sorry. I it, I thought it was in the other one. Um, so the way that works, I think you have to upgrade an ability. It's on a twelve oh. or. Tw that's, advanced no. on oh you have to have advanced yeah, in advanced order to get that effect yeah. that yeah. makes more sense that makes more sense yeah i just so, saw on a 12 or higher because i was like i did get a 12 yeah but no yeah, that's yeah, yeah, an yeah. advanced improvement i believe i don't because yeah, yeah, yeah i don't need two the, of the basic moves just for advanced. flavor okay so gotcha. you can give somebody a bonus uh or yourself a bonus advantage take plus one forward or give plus one forward to another Terrible farm, force them where you want. I, I'd say that I give advantage to James at this point and kind of th with the same, it's basically the same thought. Okay. <laughs> like trying to, it's off balance. It feels like it kind of makes sense that the next action against it would be stronger. So I think I, yeah, plus one okay. forward for James, the next thing you try. James, what are you doing? Uh, So noting the shovel as the next easiest thing as i'm not going to at all get big jim to get away from that gun chest for a moment uh i'm going to pick up this shovel and just try and hawk it as well okay i get Ooh, that's a nine plus one for my toughness so that's a 10 to 10 okay none of you guys are gonna level up with this i'm just telling you now mm -hmm. uh, it's true anyway so well you just you just whip it uh pull it back like a javelin let it fly and uh oh gosh okay so 10 plus you choose an extra effect what are you doing uh i'm going to choose uh doing terrible harm as this okay. shovel strikes the creature you i 
it's an undead. It's just stuck in its back, and it's looking actually really bad. Like, you've hurt this thing a lot. Uh, and it's, like, its fire is starting to go out. It is, it is sputtering. It is barely, it's almost kind of wobbling on the bike, and it's definitely slowed down. Uh, mm -hmm. what would he even do? You know what, actually? It is, uh, knowing that you two, it cannot get away from you at all. It is actually going to, uh, oh, how do, how do monster attacks work? It's, I believe oh. it's the same, isn't it, as ours? Well, I don't, I almost never roll. I'm wondering. Yeah. Crash course refresher before we get back more officially in what ex what's going on in this exact minute. We're in the okay. back. So the camera focuses back on you. You have just, uh, I guess, Max, you have just brains the the Dullahan with a a fire extinguisher. Managed to actually, like, uh, hook it around his neck and, and really slow it down and damage it a fair bit. And, uh, and then, uh, James, you have speared it just in the back, and it looks bad. It's just the... The shovel is still there. The wooden parts caught fire, but the shovel's clearly embedded in the thing. And it looks not happy. First thing it tries to do is to kind of zigzag to the, the right, maybe get alongside or even behind you. Uh, but Francesca's more or less just slides behind it, doesn't let it go. And then it tries to kind of speed up, but obviously you guys have done enough damage to it that it's it's actually slowing down. And it's getting slower by the minute. And Francesca is, like, clearly getting closer to the thing. Um, and the screaming kind of switches to a different... It's like a higher pitch. It's starting to, like, go off the register, which is mm -hmm. uh, kind of a weird feeling because you can you can feel it there more than you can hear it. Uh, and it doesn't feel mm. good. Uh, and it's getting brighter. What do you do? Getting brighter? It's, it's, it's steaming up. Is it getting yeah, it's steaming up. It's it's burning off the uh it's burning off that that uh fire extinguisher. The foam. There we go. Uh-oh. Uh let's see, what do we got here? Do I have anything? Hmm. I suspect uh, my immediate response to that would be ducking below into the uh in, into the, the back truck of this uh vehicle to see if I can shelter myself behind any paneling. I would do the same. Okay. It just in fear, in fear that this is like a, a going to explode kind of thing. Okay. Peek over what a little if, bit, though. James, what if I told you you just turned into a very convenient projectile? <laughs> so you, then I would you be picked less, up by you. You curl up kind of into a ball to try and shield yourself from the impending uh, bad. Mm -hmm. Bigfoot doesn't like you much. But you make a really good missile. He's gonna toss you with the uh the Dullahan. Oh. <laughs> I feel like this is an act under pressure to uh something. Well, how are you how are you responding to being a projectile? Okay, so now we used to we used to teach the kids this back in class. The important thing is to make sure you've tucked all your hinges correctly and you're in a safety position. So I'm gonna be using my arms around both of my knees to lock them in tight so that it's harder for the, uh, for the dull hand to get grab of, uh, you know, any loose material. And also get ready to tuck and roll. I want to know that if I hit that ground, I'm ready to just give it a little bit of a, you know, three times somersault after it and then, you know, just unfurl myself against the ground. I gotta slow down slowly. Okay. Uh, give me a roll. Yeah, that so it, it sounds like an act under pressure. Uh, that's a seven. Okay. I, I will say it is technically an eight, too, but not that that matters because of okay. the, the plus one forward. So you feel yourself hoisted in the air, instinctively uh, do your best uh, roly-poly impression. Do they even have those in Australia? You know what a roly-poly is, right? No. Pill bug. Pill bug. Uh, do you have Little... any bugs that like roll up into kind of a defensive ball? I guess armadillo, like armadillo. probably like, pangolin in what was that? Yeah, I'm familiar with the pangolin and the armadillo. Okay. Yeah, so you, you do your best armadillo pe pangolin impression, and you just become the best projectile you possibly can. 
unfortunately that does mean you hit the road at like 80 miles an hour so it hurts a lot mm. uh like a lot what, it's like three harm. number it's like three harm <laughs> mm. oh my god so you i am now just unstable barely... and almost dead you are yeah. uh, you've taken four damage right uh i'd taken three before that oh you are yeah you i mean three? i thought you took two. Oh shoot well, he took the psychological harm. Uh, that oh, that's right, away. the psychological that's, damage. That was that's, for, yeah. That'll push you over the edge if you actually, like, reach zero, but for all intents and purposes, your health-wise, you're one higher. Your will to live is just a little lower. Um, I so mean, yeah. th there are seven in my harm pool, so I would have only marked six, so I'm still not okay. dead yet. Okay. You, are, you do mark unstable, meaning you have a, a lasting injury that will get worse as time goes on. I'm not gonna I think it's a that's long a time, though. It's like if you leave it for a day, then it's a then you, it's a problem. Yeah. Okay. Max, you see this happen. Oh, boy. And then it's your turn. What uh, do you do? He's sweating. I would say I... I think I would try and open up the gun case at this point okay so bigfoot if reaches big for lies. you oh yeah so big big yeah. jim is reaching for <laughs> you uh <laughs> give me an act under pressure as well oh no and you have uh i'm gonna i'm gonna go is with it? the what could go wrong probably it, i was gonna say is there a world in which i try and manipulate him to not do it not that I'm better uh, at that. I, I don't think he's I just, waiting. I, I don't think you he's... Know that, yeah, he doesn't seem like he's... Yeah, so type, type. you're more or less duck, ducking Big Jim and going for the gun case. Okay. So act under pressure? Yeah, probably. Okay. So that is a... Uh, that is a seven, I guess. And if it's... <laughs> yeah, you get a plus one, but that's still an eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I was wondering... I don't think I would even... I don't know if I would say that I am charging what are you setting out danger to do? on purpose. Yeah. yeah. So, so what are you setting out to do? Uh, I would say I'd be setting out to resist and open up the gun case would be my goal. Okay. You have two options. You can resist or you can open up the gun case. <laughs> so I, open up the, I open up the gun case and he throws me anyways. That doesn't do me much good. Uh, I think I resist. I think I resist in the attempt to stay in the car so that I can okay. open up the gun case successfully. So you you just kind of uh, abandon just all hope for the gun case and lunge for one of the handles to hold on. No, 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 no. <laughs> okay. Uh, Unf uh, and and so because of that, Bigfoot cannot, cannot pully pry, pry you off. He's not going to rip your arms off, so he's not trying oh, thank God. super hard. Uh... But you don't have a whole lot of time because yeah. now the uh, now the Dullahan is like hard to look at. It is very bright. And James is like half a mile back by this point. Oh, so he's no. he's out. It's I, all you. Big Bigfoot okay. is distracted because more or less he failed at the one thing he could think of doing. And it's not like he can do much of anything. Uh, can I have another attempt, uh, another crack at opening up the case after? Like, or is that is he unwilling? Uh, you can if if that's what you want to try. I'm gonna I'm gonna give it a shot. I'm going to okay. attempt act under pressure. Probably still. It's locked. Well, you don't even oh, get shoot. that far. It's just locked. Oh, it's locked. Like any responsible gun owner, there's a lock. Yeah. Is <laughs> the now, dull hand explodes? Just... Wait for real? Yeah. Oh. It goes off like a bomb. Uh, so, having not successfully stopped it from blowing up, uh, Francesca did hit the brakes. Like, you're not totally in trouble, but seeing as neither neither you nor, uh, nor Bigfoot were able to do anything to stop it from going off further, uh, she just hits the brakes. And so, you guys kind of spin wildly out of control, and I, I'd even say the, the truck, like, goes off the road. Maybe spills you out. Maybe you take some damage. Maybe you don't. It doesn't really matter because uh, what's kind of more important is that your your quarry, the thing you've been pursuing, has just detonated. Uh, and mm -hmm. so it, it just hits you with a wash of flame. 
Uh, probably honestly, you are tossed out of the bed of the truck and then knocked backwards by the shock wave. Uh, so I don't know, mark two harm just for ouch. Yeah. Uh, done. And you land. And surprisingly, the forest is soft and you're not on fire. Uh, in fact, uh, the rain catches up to you and is putting out all of the surrounding flames. Uh, but you're feeling kind of worse for wear and the truck is, is not totaled, but is most assuredly out of commission for the time being. Uh, and James is nowhere to be seen. What do you do? I mean, first of all, I say, I mean, thank God you didn't throw me. I would have been, you would have thrown me at him while he freaking blew up. Are you kidding me? And then I, big Jim I guess just I just dusted myself you. off. Yeah, that's, that's all. And then makes Jim. like a punching motion. Uh, I guess I look for Fran. Okay, so Fran so is still in the, cab of the cabin of the truck, and she looks mostly just kind of concussed, like she just tumbled mm. inside the cab of a, cabin of a truck a couple of times, uh, and then got hit by a blast, and so, yeah, she's just uh, fine, but it's, like, she's not conscious. great fine. Yeah, but I don't think she's moving anytime soon. Okay, uh, I think that I well, it just exploded, but... I, I would I would rush back. Am I rushing into danger or not? No. Okay. That I I rush back trying to find well, I guess it would be like road. There's me, bike, or bike remains, and then theoretically James would be far beyond at that point. But I so I guess I start running and try and observe observe if there's like any remains of the bike or anything so, while I'm running. There's uh so you get there and there's kind of there's a pile of slag almost uh, where the bike had been when it went off. And it's kind of this like weird burning smear because it was still going fast when it went off. And so it kind of mm -hmm. almost rocketed forwards and then just rolled and, and tumbled and whatever. And so it's almost kind of embedded in a, in a tree or kind of an embankment. And it's just this mess of whatever the Dullahan was made of, uh, whatever hadn't burnt off by the explosion, and then the remains of the bike, which is non-functional. It was a, a motorbike at some point, but now it is just a hunk of metal uh, left in the forest, and if you do nothing about it, it'll probably get forgotten by time. Mm. I, 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 I look around on the horizon to see if I see any traces of James. Uh... No, but you know he's probably like half a mile back if you want to go walking. Um, is there anything is there any like kind of little scrap of the bike I could grab? Uh give me an investigate a mystery. It's not so much a uh ask a question of more of do you pull it off? And what do you find? It's like a it's like a two. <laughs> uh Mark EXP. You uh, find I'll take it. Um you find a finger. Oh God! Uh, I put it in my—I do put it in my pocket, but I'm like, I think it's a little cool, and I put it in my pocket, but I'm also like, oh God, a lot has happened today, and I take like probably about two seconds to process uh, picking up a finger and putting it in my pocket, and it's not enough. But I then I set off down the road looking for James. Okay. So it doesn't take long to find James. He tucked and rolled and he rolled well, but unfortunately James was already kind of injured and then also going really fast and then he hit a burning thing and then he bounced and then yeah. he rolled to a stop at like 70, 80 miles an hour. Like that's that's rough to rough to inflict upon a person. James is not doing well. Uh, like that makes you should probably get him to a hospital not doing well. I But he is alive I, and maybe conscious. I attempt to pick him up is or like gently drag him the best I can mm -hmm. back okay. to uh yeah. I'm I'm gently dazed. I'm my character is uh the, the unstable uh that I've achieved, the ongoing injury is going to be a concussion. Um so okay. similar sense. to like a groggy dazed kind of like Did you did you happen to see where where oh god, what just happened? We did it. We did it. I don't know how, but we did it. <laughs> and I carry I, I carry you as best I can, but like I do drop you a little bit every like pretty often. 
<laughs> I take one home and I am dead. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just a, I'm just a guy. Um, but yeah, I, I, I try and carry carry him or drag him or move him the best I can back okay. towards Francesca so and Big Jim. It, it takes a while, but by yeah. the time you get James there, uh, Bigfoot has righted the truck uh, and they are attempting to start it. And it seems like they're making some headway. Uh, and no one really speaks. No one wants to speak. Like, it kind of feels like a Pyrrhic victory. You clearly stopped the thing. Uh, but you definitely you definitely took some licks getting there. Uh, mm -hmm. and so you, you more or less just haul James into the bed of the truck. Uh, lie him down, make him comfy. There's like an emergency blanket and you probably wrap him with it and make him comfy. Uh, I'm going to look across it to Big Jim, uh, who I hope won't immediately palm my face as I try to say. Now, Jim, we're, uh, we're either even now, or the scales are tilted way the other way. It's your choice, buddy. <laughs> he makes, uh, have you ever done that thing where you put your hand out the window when you're, like, driving on a highway or whatever, and you kind of, like, mm -hmm. wiggle your hand up and down? Yeah, my hand's a dolphin. Yeah. Yeah. His hand's a dolphin. I think that means yes. <laughs> I don't know that okay. one. Okay. <laughs> so, unless you guys have anything else you want to do, at this point you pile into the truck, which is not running well anymore and may or may not be running mostly off of its enchantments, and you just go back to town. And mm -hmm. the fires are out, uh, the, the rain set in and more or less uh, put them out before it could get too bad. Uh, but there definitely will be some kind of lasting harm to the local woodlands. Uh, but you guys are fine. The Dullahan is no longer riding. And uh, de facto, you have solved the phantom carjackings. <laughs> he did it. <laughs> and I'm feeling kind of proud of myself. I did throw a fire extinguisher. That's... You did. Hands in the air. Uh... But all right. So, it's, is there anything else we should do in universe, or because otherwise there is an end of session, uh, wrap up thing that helps you like get experience. It's also just like a fun, flavorful uh, way to end the session. Sure. Uh, do you know what page that is? Because I have not um, read that part yet. It's on the thing that I linked. Oh, I mean, it it's also like uh, there's just a couple questions that. Uh, Two thirty five. Yeah, sure. So at the end of every session, the keeper asks the following questions. If you get one or two yes answers, you mark an experience. If you get three or four, you mark two. So, and it's also kind of, yeah, just kind of, it, it it's a nice clean end cap for like an episode of something anyways. Okay. Uh, so, sure. Uh, did we conclude the current mystery? Assuming would, there are no additional phantoms out there, I believe so. Yeah, I'd say I'd say the current mystery seems concluded. I think that that'd be a, on the keeper to confirm or deny at this point. Sounds concluded. Sure. Probably not like a. I mean, you were <laughs> not you a were rousing to solve success. The carjackings. Yeah, it's so, it it will stop now. So I think that that is a success. Okay. So Did we save one. someone from certain death or worse? <laughs> I don't think that. James counts. <laughs> uh, I, did we? I don't yeah. think we technically saved Big Jim, who apparently was in control of yeah. that situation. The only argument would be for the um, the forest fires, and I don't know if I feel like I would confidently say that's saving someone. So from I, certain I will actually say yes. Like, had you guys oh. not stopped these things, it would have just burnt down a lot oh. of Boone County. So, okay. yes. Okay, then yes. You don't see the then direct yes. results of it, because it didn't happen, but... Uh, Great. Fires in this area are no joke and do kill people easily. Well, with it, then, all right. Then I'm glad we stopped it then. So that's two. Uh, did, did we, we learn, learn something, something new and important about the world? I mean, Max definitely did. Max learned a, a lot about the world. I don't know if it's uh, per character or, or not, then. If... If you I get don't think one it's per or two, character. okay. Oh yeah, because the next one, yeah. Did, did we, we learn, learn something, something new? new about the world? I feel like the answer is absolutely like. I mean, yes, in the regards of, in our it was our first time in the world. I think it's in a more meta sense, 
I think that's yeah. something that you probably always mark on your first session, but you yeah. might not mark on your second or third or fourth. So okay, I, I think I'll, we probably I'll did. take I think, that. I think we did. Sure, why not? You have played I think we learned a session a of lot about the, of the week. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, we we learned about like you know the time period loosely. Uh, we learned about the town. We learned about some of the characters within. I think there's yeah, there's a lot that we learned for the first okay. time. You, but, Max, individually also learned a lot about yeah. the actual state of the world. Yeah, Max individually learned tons. Okay. And then did we learn something new and important about one of the hunters? I'm just going to say yes. You met each other. I'd say that's probably, yeah, that's probably true. Yeah. That's kind of, is another one that's kind of a gimme for the first session, which I think is kind of nice that there's some gimmies. Yeah, for I'll, I'll be more stringent if we do another one of these because. Yeah, that's like, it's going to, you can't just say, oh yeah, I learned that James's favorite color is this. You're like, I, it's the kind of thing that you probably mark less the more sessions you have. Yeah. Is my guess. Yeah, that makes sense. But that would, uh, that gives Max a level. Cool. What are you getting? Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, because in this levels uh, happen immediately. I'd say, oh gosh, probably be a move from another playbook. And based Ooh. off of the world, let's see. There is based off of what happened, move probably from another something. Playbook. I didn't even think about that. That sounds fun. Yeah, it's really fun. I think there is a um, the crooked had one uh, driver feels right after today which is okay. plus one ongoing while driving and you can hotwire stuff Ooh, okay which seems i think like yeah leaning into taking stuff that seems relevant to what happened and to get you that level feels kind of fun so i'd say yeah he unlocked the driver anyways that is that and that is going to do it here for today for monster of the week if you guys want more of this, do let me know in the form of a comment down below. I understand it's a very different thing for this channel, but I am a really big fan of tabletop RPGs. I adore Dungeons & Dragons. I've really adored my time with Monster of the Week so far. Just let me know, because I know it's kind of outside the normal wheelhouse, but it's not so far removed from gaming. So let me know. What do you think? I'll see you next time.